So right now they'll be coming carrying the most speed into turn number one and the final race of the round of 12 is underway. Two and three wide already in turn one. Suarez a little loose there on corner exit, heading off into turn four. Turn five now. Seen some accidents here this weekend. Oh man, Briscoe really wide right there out on the paint. Look at this 99, he is pushing hard. Suarez with a lot of pace at the road courses this year. Really, really fast right now. Hound in that 24, here's a great battle too. Yeah, you see the two car. Austin Cendrick underneath the 20 of Christopher Bell. When they get down here to this rear chicane, somebody's going to have to give this spot up. Going through here side by side is difficult at best. Nobody's giving up, though. And there may, there's some contact. And you see the 41, Cole Custer. Just to use you described, Jeff, you go through that corner wrong, how much momentum you can lose. Cindric able to get by the 20 of Christopher Bell. We have seen the Toyota struggle a little bit on road courses this year. We'll see if Christopher Bell can change that tendency. Big moment right there for the three car. He's going to have to pull over here and stop, guys, as he misses the chicane on the front straightaway. Austin Dillon, that's what you have to do. If you miss the chicane, you come to a full stop immediately to avoid the NASCAR penalty. And that can happen on both the backstretch chicane, the trilogy chicane, or the front stretch chicane. Once again, that 48 driven not by Alex Bowman this week, but Noah Gregson behind the wheel as Alex Bowman out with, again, concussion-like symptoms for the second race in a row. We talk about how difficult this racetrack is. Well, you can see how narrow it is. The groove is very small, very tight corners. This leads into what is normally Charlotte Oval turn one and two. This is now what is normally on this racetrack. When you're running the oval, the most you know, the difficult part becomes the easiest, but it approaches this rear chicane, heavy braking. Look at the curves, look how big these blue curves are on the left, and then on the right, if you hit those curves too hard, it can actually damage your car. And we get confirmation from NASCAR that three has done the proper thing as far as stopping that race car. He is clear there will be no penalty, and that'll be something we see all day long here at the road. Will they average about 10 missed chicanes per race? Joe Gibbs Racing drivers nose to tell. We saw the 18. Kyle Busch, the back end, kicking out as he's chasing after this 11 of Denny Hamlin. One thing that I've noticed this weekend is how these guys can hustle this race car. The tire here must have a lot of grip, give these guys a lot of confidence. The cars do move around a lot, but they seem to really be driving these cars. Off corner exit, a lot of swing in the back. Look out front here. Do you see the back of the car swinging around out here in front of this car here? Denny Hamlin's doing a good job in managing all that. He started 24th, already up to 18. So a good start for Denny. He was one of the drivers we knew we had to watch. Denny Hamlin starting a little further in the back, as well as Ross Chastain, another playoff driver who has quite a few points coming in. But because of his starting position, he's currently below the cut line. So Ross Chastain has his work cut out for him. It's a lot of good lateral grip in these race cars right now, allowing these drivers to really lean on them, switching directions. But we recognized yesterday in the Xfinity race, tires did make a difference. They did fall off. They were better when you were able to come get new tires. You could drive through the field. So I have to pay attention today to see if this tire is no different. We saw a little brake smoke there. I want to clear something up. I know you guys uh, had received word from NASCAR. They thought everything was good with the stop by Austin Dillon. They re-looked at that and said, no, that was not sufficient. And so a penalty was put towards the three of Austin Dillon. Take another look. Let's see why we would think they changed their mind on that. Here he comes, misses the chicane, and pulls over here to take a stop. Oh, he didn't stop all the way, so you have to come to a complete stop. Doesn't look like he did. They took another look at it, changed their mind on the penalty. I'm okay with them taking another look at it. 
making sure they got it right. I'm okay with that. You have to make the call right, use instant replay, use everything you have to be able to make that call. Well, now you see why the stop is so important because the penalty was a pass through, which puts, his, puts him out well behind the field now, only in front of one car. The 78 of Josh Williams, who also had a penalty earlier in the race, had to do a pass through. So these two cars are pretty good distance behind the field. Dave Ross Chastain has made his way up yeah, to 27. Yeah, we didn't stop, so we just not stop enough. We didn't stop enough. Uh, I didn't think we did. Yep, Rick, that was a three radio, uh, seeing what happened with Austin's car there. As for Ross Chastain, what a job his crew did. Tore the right left side of that car off when, when he went into the barriers off of turn five in qualifying. The garage closed at 2.30 yesterday. Oh, we got a spin. Almost a spin. Right here on the front straightaway, the 45 car of Bubba Wallace misses the front straightaway entirely. He's in ninth place when this happened. Missed the last chicane here on the front straightaway. Got into the braking zone. The car was way uncomfortable and out of control. Just bailed on making the chicane entirely. All right, Junior, you said just a moment ago, uh, on average, 10 missed chicanes. Well, we're only four laps into this and two already. Yeah, two that we know of. Box them up there, good ways, be ready. So he's worried about flat spots on his tires. We did see a lot of smoke. And so if you slide the tire, Steve, it will give you a flat spot, create vibrations. The tire could come apart. Absolutely. And then do We're more ready damage. If you need to come. Right there. You're ready. You yeah, can I'm pin here you. and not lose a lap. Bubba says he's coming to you. So he obviously feels that vibration. Let's take another look at it, Junior. This is coming into the front stretch chicane. Oh, you see it just got really loose. And I guess he couldn't commit to the wheel. So he comes to a stop. Back to the three radio that said they didn't stop enough. Unfortunately, it's real clear. It's did you stop or did you not, right? Did the tires come to a stop? So stop enough, I thought was a good way to say, no, we, we just didn't do it correctly. Bubba Wallace did, so I think he's fine on the penalty. But we are hearing on the radio, he's coming now to pit road to replace those flat spotted tires. So an issue already for Bubba Wallace and the 45. Joey Logano out in front, Bubba Wallace serving his fiddle in the NASCAR Cup Series playoffs on NBC. Bank of America, Roval 400. Last year, Kyle Larson led the final eight laps of this race for the win. Well, I caught up with the crew chief of the five team, Cliff Daniels, earlier today, and he disclosed with me that this was one of those scenarios where having that success last year might have actually hurt them more heading into this year's run. Here's what he had to say about that notebook. Well, unfortunately for me, um, we tried to blend some of what, you know, conceptually was good from last year into what we had this year. And, and it's a completely different car with totally different suspension and tires. And it, and it just didn't work out uh, very well for us yesterday. So uh, that, that's one of those things where having a good notebook from years past actually hurt us more than it helped us. And, uh, you know, we, we've had to make a lot of adjustments to our car overnight going into today. Uh, that are a lot different than what our notes last year would have suggested. So uh, shame on me for, you know, thinking that we could apply some of those concepts. But uh, we've uh, we've seen what didn't work, and now we just got to react to it and, and be better for today. Larson qualified for this race in the 16th position. He's up to 12, eight laps in. Grab a nice cold Coke and buckle up. 
You're watching NASCAR on NBC. And already seven laps in on lap eight here. Denny Hamlin negotiating his way around this 17 turn roval here in Charlotte. Want to take a look at the telemetry brought to you by Progressive. Riding on board with the 14 car of Chase Briscoe. We're going to be able to look at the steering, the braking as well. Obviously, uh, watch his right foot, the throttle, as he goes through the infield, Jeff, how careful he is. Can't get full throttle in some of these areas, but he will give it just enough throttle to really keep the momentum up. A little bit of throttle right here. Can't quite go full throttle. It's so slick. We heard Chase Elliott you know, describe it as a parking lot inside of the Charlotte Motor Speedway, and you know, it just does not have the grip. Now, he's going to be wide open here. Seem change gears. Right there, he's dancing like brake, foot, brake gas, brake gas, brake gas through that one section. Now watch his left foot. Let's see if he gives a little comfort check. There you go. Just make sure the brakes are there. This is that heavy braking zone in the rear chicane. Slow back to the throttle. Gradually getting the throttle back down. Lifts for shifts. Pretty calm hands. You know, his car must be driving at least pretty good. His hands are pretty calm. No real fast motions. Down into one of the tougher corners of the racetrack right here. Now this part right here, trying to go full throttle, trying to get more throttle, really hard to do. He's almost, he's like from 50 to 100%, 50 to 100%. What makes road course racing hard is really knowing how much throttle to be able to really feed this car to be able to keep the momentum up. Sometimes you're using the brake and the throttle at the same time. The other thing I always struggle with is understanding like where I needed to be better. There's so many corners. There's so many opportunities to lose speed, gain speed. Why am I getting beaten? Why do I need speed? Where is it? I always struggle. Unless my car was really handling poorly, that's where I think road, really good road racers know. They know I got to be better right here if I want to go fast. With all the information these drivers have today, you would have loved it now, being able to get all of the, here's where you're getting beat. These guys are beating you in exactly this position. And this is what they're doing with gas and brake and shifts and different gears to try to beat you there. 22 car here still out front, comfortably over that 24, but you look back there behind, Byron and Suarez has faded just a little bit. He's got Reddick right on his back bumper. Reddick's been pushing him a little bit. He's actually got a little bit of space now between the 99 and the eight car of Reddick. Blaney right there behind them as well. Let's get a few of the updates from these drivers and where they're running. William Byron right now in that second spot. Marty, is he content to run here behind the 22? I'm sure he'd love to have the lead, Rick, but think about the week for William Byron, the Hendrick Motorsports driver. On Monday, he was below the cut line, minus 11, but then the NASCAR appeals panel overturned his 25-point penalty for spinning Denny Hamlin under caution at Texas, and all of a sudden, he was plus 14. Talking to Rudy Fugel this morning, though, he said, I honestly feel like that did not change our game plan for today. We need points in stage one. We need them in stage two, but William Byron has always been terrific at the Rover right now, plus 26 above the cut line, Dave. Daniel Suarez runs in third, just about 3.8 seconds behind the first place running Joey Logano. When I talked to crew chief Travis Mack about the third place qualifying effort put in yesterday, I said, did you have any of those Sonoma feelings? That was the race where they all broke through to the win column for the first time. He goes, yeah, but I also had feelings about Circuit of the Americas. We didn't win that race, but we were the fastest car, and I think we're the fastest car this weekend, and you can see some of that on the Coca-Cola onboard. Kim? Well, Dave, Christopher Bell runs in the ninth position and is in jeopardy of not transferring to the round of eight. And when I talked to crew chief Adam Stevens a couple of weeks ago, he said the first round of the playoffs was about performance and they excelled. But he said this round is about luck. And while luck has not been on their side at Texas or Talladega, and Christopher came into this race 45 points below the elimination line and pretty much faces a must-win situation. So Christopher said they're pretty much committing to not getting stage points and doing what they can to position themselves to win or at least finish as high as possible.
Steve that means coming before the first stage break making sure that they can get there and get off cycle with some of these other drivers. Yeah the end of the stage is lap 25 when the leader comes and takes two to go pit road will close which would be lap 23 so 22 or 23 we're going to see some busy pit road with the guys outside the playoffs and even a couple playoff cars like Christopher Bell that are thinking they have to win. The problem with Christopher Bell is I don't know whether they got the pace to do what a lot of the cars there are going to do that same strategy. 20 car losing a few positions here, kind of struggling. Got these three cars we're riding with right now, right behind him. Yeah, in addition to that, his teammate Denny Hamlin got to 17. He's kind of stalled out on speed. His teammate Kyle Busch, he's gone backwards. And Truex, he's not been able to go forward either. So that problem has been for a while. This entire year with the Toyotas, they just have not had the pace. Harrison Burton in the 21, just in front of Kyle Busch here in the 18 as they work their way through the front stretch chicane. Again, Kyle Busch eliminated after the first round of the playoffs. He's running in the 19th position now, chasing after Harrison Burton. Well, for Kyle Busch, it was really two failed engines that knocked him out of that first round. He, he was pretty good in position to win Darlington, uh, where the playoffs kicked off and, and had an engine failure in the closing laps of that race. Um, you know, this is going to be a season he definitely look, looks back on and kind of wonders what if. Last season with Joe Gibbs Racing, moving to Richard Childress Racing next year. It's hard to believe the car behind him, that teal and black number 19 for Martin Truex Jr. is winless this yeah. year. I mean, who would have thought this far into the season, a championship driver in a top tier organization. There were some races that looked like they were lining up for Truex, but he just hasn't seemed to found his way to break through into victory lane, missed the playoffs, and now currently runs well outside the top 10 back in the uh, 20th position behind Kyle Busch. Marty. Bubba Wallace with that early miss of the chicane. Have they gotten things back into rhythm? All the way back in 38th now, Rick, and he immediately came on the radio and said, I have to pit. That is why, Steve, that is what a flat spot looks like. He slid the right front for a good 50, 100 feet or so, and that's what happened to so that Goodyear tire. Completely destroys it. That's undrivable for your driver, isn't it, Steve, when the tire looks like that? Undrivable and great decision for Bubba Wallace. Not trying to ride it out. Don't add another mistake on top of locking up the tire. Come to pit road, take your medicine, put four fresh tires on it. Still a lot of racing to go with if you can believe it, 97 laps to go at this very difficult road course. Just 13 to go in stage one. It's been all Joey Logano up front for the first 12 laps. He needs to win. He could win and advance to the round of eight right here at the Charlotte Roble. IndyCar star Connor Daly in the field making his Cup Series debut this afternoon. He's driving that number 50 for the money team. I spoke with Connor yesterday about getting this weekend started. Unfortunately, on a rough note for that team, they had an issue yesterday in practice. Connor explained to me that he lost all ability to use the steering wheel. Unsure exactly what broke, but the team was able to get it fixed back out there on the track. Unfortunately, starting in the very back of the field, but Connor was still in very high spirits because because this has been a goal of his his entire life. He told me he grew up a NASCAR fan. Making a Cup Series start has been something he's wanted since he can remember. And now that he's had this opportunity to work with the money team and actually make this dream come true, he's just happy to be here. So Connor Daly piloting that number 50 for the first time in the Cup Series, confidently making his start here in this series.
for the first time, NASCAR fans can view every lap of NASCAR Cup Series races from inside the cockpit of any car they choose. Live and car camera streams for the entire field are available. Visit NASCAR.com slash drive or download the NASCAR mobile app. If you wanted to go the fastest around the racetrack, you could have been riding along with Joey Logano. We want to take a look at the Xfinity fastest lap. That was turned by Joey Logano on lap two. While he's had a quick car since the drop of the green, that 24 has impressed me. William Byron continues to stalk this car, Joe Logano, and he gets a little bit closer. But as he gets closer, it gets a little tougher to be able to draw up there and make the pass. Just a few laps left, 10 laps to go in the stage. Looks like the better car of the two. Where can he pass him? Where's the best place around the racetrack? It's going to be tough for him to really make the pass. In the, in the infield, unless Joey makes a big mistake. I think once he gets into some of the braking zones, there's some opportunities there to pass into the braking zones of the chicanes on the back stretch and the front stretch. We've seen some passing in this section right here, which doesn't seem like a passing zone, but right there, if he was closer, we've seen drivers kind of dive to the left and try to outbreak them into turn eight. In this situation, it's about a good runoff turn eight to try to get a draft up behind the 22. But like Dale Jr. said, the best breaking zones are the two chicanes, uh, which is where they're heading right now. There you go. This is Chase Elliott kind of trying to get to the inside there of Austin Cedric of the two. And Austin is racing for his life, his playoff advancing life right now, as you see right there at the points. Three behind Denny Hamlin. And this is as they run, if they finished right here and they collect the stage points for stage one, stage two. So. You see, he loses a position. He loses that position for each stage end and the end of the race. That's why it's important for him to try to fight. He fought as hard as he could to stay in front of the 16 car. He fought as hard as he could to stay in front of the nine car. And he loses those two positions and goes from even to Denny Hamlin to behind six. So he's still in this. And getting these stage points right now will be important. He's got two seconds from him to Haley. For these next nine laps, he's going to have to run perfect laps, Kim. And Dale, crew chief Jeremy Mullins told me this morning they were going to be aggressive in this first stage. We're obviously seeing that from Austin. But Jeremy said you cannot go into this race with one plan. You have to be absolutely flexible. So the number two team has three or four plans in their pocket, depending on what other teams do throughout the day. And Austin told us in countdown to green that he wanted to know exactly where he stood in the points throughout this entire race, Marty. So he knew how aggressively he needed to be. Kim, six laps, still pit stops for teams who want to put themselves in a better position for stage two. The Mahindra tractors on board is with Chase Briscoe, who currently is 18 below the cut line. So Steve had an interesting conversation with his crew chief, Johnny Klausmeyer, a moment ago when he said, listen, if we're in the top 15, we'll stay out. We will not flip the stage because by his math, there will be several who do flip the stage. So right now, he is outside of getting stage points, but he thinks enough teams would pit that in 14th, he'll stay out, hoping he can indeed get stage points here in nine laps. Well, my math agrees. I have Reddick, Almendinger, Elliott makes three, Haley McDowell make five, and Custer six cars in front of Briscoe. I expect all of them to come to pit road before the end of the stage. I should move Briscoe up to the eighth or ninth position. So I, I like that strategy for the 14, and I believe it will find some stage points. Steve, that you had explained earlier, a two-stop strategy and a three-stop strategy. If you stop before stage one, you're on a three-stop strategy minimum. Right. And you showed that Xfinity fastest lap from Joey Logano. That is two seconds slower than the leader, or two seconds faster than what the leaders are running now. So I just don't know how you plan on only stopping twice. There's going to be a couple times in this race where you're going to have to line up with brand new tires right on your rear bumper. I'm not sure you can defend that. We'll see. Someone may take that gamble, but I expect all of the leaders to stop at least three times. We'll see if Chase Briscoe can stay the path and get some stage points. Eight laps to go.
Just over five laps remaining in stage one. I applaud set your scanner, place to set your beverage. Uh, it's a comfortable experience for these fans. You see that really all the way around. You're cry treated to like like an above average seating performance situation it's a it's a great view and that's the other thing about the roval as this bleed heats up guys we talk a lot about how it's different for the drivers for the fans it's one of the few road courses in the world we're sitting in the stands you should be able to see the entire circuit well they're getting ready to see a great race for the lead right here william byron has closed up on joey logano last few laps have been a little bit quicker now how does he get this pass done we talked about passing zones breaking zones key to it is you've got to have the right about afford momentum at the right time so you can be gaining on him on a breaking zone or in one of these tight sections we see Ross Chastain on pit road. Dave. He's come from 34th starting position up to the 21st position so that was a good run for him. He said I just need a little bit more forward drive. They said we have an adjustment for that. He'll get four Goodyear tires and a Phillips Noco fuel and he's out of here. Steve coming early like that so that he can I think it was two seconds you said earlier three yeah. seconds so if he comes three laps before the other playoff cars he'll have three laps on those fresher tires that could be six seconds on the racetrack so you know he can make six seconds off on say Danny Hamlin or Chase Briscoe or some of those other playoff drivers um, who decide to, to also come to pit road the question is who's going to come and who is it I think for Logano for Byron, for Suarez, you have to stay on the racetrack. You have so many points available because you're going to finish so high in this stage. But what about Briscoe, Hamlin, Bell, Larson, the guys towards the back half? What do they decide to do? It's decision time, right? Because next time around will be three laps to go. Uh, so if you are anyone other than these front two cars, you really need to make that the, the choice. Three laps to go would be when you have to come to pit road. And that's because pit road closes with two laps to go. As soon as the race leader crosses the start finish line, Pit Road closes. Yeah, and Pit Road is getting very busy out the window with all of the non playoff drivers. They know the cautions are coming. The battle for the lead is tight. This battle for eighth is stacked up. And you got to, if you're Cedric's struggling a little, it seems. He is, but you would, you know, if you're crew chief or your spotter, say, hey, man, we think them guys behind you are coming to Pit Road anyways. Don't push this thing and don't slide off this racetrack. Don't make a mistake that takes us out of the opportunity to get some stage points here. We think a lot of guys around us are going to be coming to Pit Road. Just finish this out. That's great information that I would absolutely be relaying, right? You don't want Cindric. You don't want to kind of pull over, but at the same time, don't damage your own car. Don't don't take the points out of our bucket. And we talk about Cindric racing hard in that two car to try to finish up in stage points. Well, I'm going to tell you something, guys. One of the fastest race cars on the track is Michael McDowell in that yellow car making a pass on Justin Haley. Cindric's going to have some pressure coming to him. So here's really the decision time. A little surprising that Reddick stays on the racetrack. He probably figures he could come next time around. He's close enough to the leader that he can get to that pit commitment line. There you go. See right there. There's an Almondinger, Chase Elliott. If we stay right here, it's going to look like a caution. Here they all come. McDowell's now going to come. Haley's going to come. Bell, uh, he's a must win. Makes sense why he's coming. Kevin Harvick. We'll just, it looks like uh, a caution, <laughs> but it isn't. If you're a playoff guy, stay on the racetrack. If you're not, come to pit road, Marty. Alan Gustafson told me, man, if we're not going to get a playoff point, we are going to flip the stage. That's what they do right here. Said so the car really no better than it was yesterday, especially entering NASCAR turn one here at the Roval, Kim. And Marty, no surprise that the 20 is in. They told us they were not committed to stage points, just too deep in the points. They're looking for a win or a high finish. Christopher said the car doesn't feel bad, just a little bit loose. Busy, busy pit road here, Steve. It is a busy pit road, and this is why Chastain, as you mentioned, came a lap early, because he's going to try to leapfrog some of these guys. So now as we pick up the leader, Joey Logano, this is still going to be the race for the stage win. He's going to, I assume, stay on the racetrack. Now he has the option to come this time, because as the leader, he's the one that's going to close pit road. I think that's Reddick's choice running in fourth. So as we watch Logano right here, let's first see what he's going to do. If he misses pit road by choice, which he does, Byron also, Suarez also. The next car in line is going to try to get to pit road before Logano gets to the leader. He does Reddick on pit road on the bottom of the screen. Great camera work showing why Reddick stayed out that extra lap. Kim. And Reddick already a road course winner this season. You see the number eight car right there. He said he's just struggling to put power down off turns eight and six. So a little air pressure adjustment for him. Four tires, Sunoco fuel. So it's real simple, Rick. All those cars you saw come to pit road, and it's a slew of them. If your favorite driver is Joey Logano, you're excited because he won stage one. If your favorite driver is William Byron, you're excited because he's having a good day. 
all of these cars right here are going to start behind everyone who pitted. So right now, for William Byron, it's can I pass this 21? Can I get an extra point by winning this stage? Can I get an extra playoff point that can carry on to the next rounds? This is going to be a great battle for a lap and a half. And it brings a guy like Denny Hamlin, who before this cycle was in 17th place. He's now in the top 10 to be able to get some stage points, putting him in a much more comfortable position going into the next round of the playoffs. Christopher Bell, Ross Chastain, currently still outside of that top 10 and possibility of getting points. We heard the 42 team of Ty Dillon over the wall too soon, and so they will have a penalty. And penalties of the road courses are just even more hurtful just because it's so hard to work your way back up through the traffic. Gap has stayed about the same between Logano and Byron with one lap to go here in stage one. Logano has led all 24 laps to this point. William Byron has been about six tenths to seven tenths of a second away, but hasn't been able to close that gap. It's like to me, once William Byron got there, when he tried to take that next step to try to make a pass, he doesn't have the rear grip that he needs. It looks like I see the back of the car, see that right there moving around a lot, just not enough rear grip to be able to go to the throttle to attack Joey Logano. He's using a lot of racetrack to try to get to that 22 car. I think Joey's been very smart, very clean with his laps, really not sliding the tires that much, not seeing the back of that car move around, like you pointed out with William Byron. And it's added a little tire life on the last back end of this run. He's been able to put enough pace together to stay in front of the 24 here. Briscoe and Cendric, they're below the cut line coming in. They need points, stage points. Christopher Bell as well. Bell might not get there. He's still running in the 14th spot, but Briscoe and Cendric are inside the top 10 as Logano coming through three and four here, the three and four of the Charlotte Ro or Oval, has the advantage still of three car links over William Byron. It closes up as they go through the front stretch chicane, but Logano is going to win stage one here at Charlotte. It's his sixth stage win this season, but only his first of the Roval. And as we watch this running order come through, the field is spread a little bit, but look at this. Playoffs, 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 playoffs. Top eight drivers as they ran on the racetrack, all playoff cars by no surprise. The strategy hand kind of forced the way the points are being awarded. They have a lot to lose or a lot to gain. We'll see if this is the right call for these playoff drivers. And a couple non-playoff drivers in Reddick and Almendinger. Look like they are going to round out the top 10, and they're two drivers that actually have come to pit road. So the top eight, they stayed out on the racetrack. That means that those top eight, they're going to start way in the back when we come back. It has been a eventful already ride for Chase Briscoe and a few other drivers here at the Roval.
NASCAR on NBC is brought to you by Liberty Mutual Insurance. Only pay for what you need. Toyota, let's go places. And by Northern Tool and Equipment. Start solving your projects today at northerntool.com. We're made for this. Stage one is complete. Let's check in with Rutledge Wood. And Rut, you witnessed that Jeff Burton ride around with WWE superstar AJ Styles in the NBC Toyota two-seater, didn't you? I sure did. I got You got a great view from anywhere here in the track. We're at the Paddock Club where you got a real good view of 15 and 16. But, you know, when Jeff was out there, I know he loves taking people out in the car. AJ Styles, WWE Superstar, Jumentric, uh, and Corey LaJoy's hair model. You know, it's so cool to get to see the differences of the Roval, being on the big track on the Oval Park, going through the road course. And I always wonder, you know, Jeff, when you get to drive people around a, a track like this, it, do you think AJ was more surprised by the braking or the acceleration around this track? Because they are so different here. Yeah. I think the braking surprised him. The other thing that surprised him is that you just can't not see around this racetrack very well. Corners are so tight, great big walls that are tall. He didn't know if we were going to go left or go right. So as we're braking, he wasn't real sure where the next place we were going to go. And I didn't make him feel any better when I told him I didn't know where we were going either. I did not <laughs> reassure him. Well, make sure you don't miss AJ Styles on WWE Monday Night Raw. And of course, Corey LaJoy is on the docuseries Race for the Championship all on USA. Want to check in with the Peacock Pit Box. All right, KP, DJ, you've seen stage number one is Logano's strategy. Can it pay off for him to advance? Oh, what a Sunday afternoon ride he had there, but it's getting ready to get a lot more interesting, KP. Yes. Uh, we talked about it, and you said it in the pre-race show, that the word of the day was points, and if you go using that in your drinking game, I hope you're drinking water or Coke, yeah, because there's sure. a lot to be happening here. For sure, and you know, I, I don't know about his strategy. I, I think the booth has done, Steve, you guys up there have done a great job of laying it out for the fans, laying it out for Dale and I, on why they stayed out, why they came down pit road. Uh, the Chastain, I have to say, I, I, I question that a little bit, Yep. One or two points we saw you miss this by two or three points always at the end. So it's going to be tough or they're going to come back to haunt them. All right, Steve. So Chastain, do you question that move? You said at the time a good move coming a little early. Yeah, I like it. I think he gained a few positions and he should be in a great position to score points in stage two. Now the question is, do all the playoff cars that sit on the racetrack come to pit road now? I think it'd be a big gamble to stay out on those old tires. And as expected, all eight playoff drivers will now come to pit road, Kim. And Austin Sendrick in that bright yellow Ford top left. He said, I'm getting a lot of steering shake, guys. They said, tell us if it gets worse. The call four tires, air pressure adjustment, Sunoco fuel, Dave. Third place for Daniel Suarez. Eight important stage points right there. Four tires of fuel cars, a little free, Marty. Nine critical stage points for William Byron. Bottom left to your screen. Four fresh good your tires here. Said when he caught the 22, the car was just a little too free, and he felt like he had to protect the rear. Logano said, I got a lot going on. So I lost rear drive the further that we went, and that was my biggest problem. Logano holds serve of those who pitted here on pit road, Rick, and maybe a problem back there for Chase Briscoe. We'll check on that. Yeah, Briscoe uh, looked like he was backing up there as he came off pit road. The IndyCar Series very well represented here today at Charlotte, both on and off the racetrack. I'm here now with 2016 Indy 500 champion Alexander Rossi. You're here in the 50 pit of Connor Daly. Are you just here as a Connor Daly fan this weekend? 
Connor Daly fan, NASCAR fan, um, you know, just excited to be here. This is actually the second uh, cup race I've ever been to, and uh, the first one was with Napa and Chase. So it's cool to see it kind of from, from the IndyCar side, and, um, you know, it's it's a huge learning curve. We've obviously seen it with Jimmy coming to the NTC IndyCar Series and Connor coming to here. It's it's two completely different ball games. but just happy to be here. Well, you've had the opportunity to race on a lot of different race tracks from Formula One to IndyCar, but the Roval here is very unique. What are your thoughts? Yeah, it's crazy. Um, I don't, I don't envy these guys. You know, getting these cars stopped off off of the oval into these chicanes is is a big challenge, and you see it here um, in front of the the, the, um, the pit straight, and uh, the penalty is pretty big if you miss it. Obviously, having to come to a complete stop, but um, huge amount of respect for for all of these guys and what they do, and, and I just love watching it and watching the guys at the top of their game. Well, you love being here, you love watching it, but does being here make you want to get out there and race yourself? Uh, not anytime soon. You know, I. I uh, I'll leave this to, to the to the professionals, let's call it, and I'll focus on what I'm doing. But um, you know, just just uh, become a big NASCAR fan over the past you know, four or five years, and all the way down to the Xfinity. And, and one of my best friends, Sage, um, obviously competed yesterday and did a great job. And, and Marco, my teammate, as well. So um, you know, I've, I've gotten to know a lot of the guys that are doing this, and, and like I said, just a huge amount of respect for everyone involved. Well, we love having you here. It's great to see you. Have fun today. I really appreciate the time, Alexander. Absolutely appreciate, it, guys. Thank you. That's Alexander Rossi, IndyCar driver here today as a Connor Daly fan, a Sage Karam fan, just a NASCAR fan overall. Really need to see all these IndyCar drivers here enjoying our sport this afternoon. All right, race fans, we're just moments away from getting stage two started. Five's trying to get into his box, and, and I think he's actually just trying to stop to get out of everyone's way. And unfortunately, it cost the 99. I don't think there's a lot of damage on the front of this car, but it was four spots on pit road. Um, you know, it's four points, right? If, if those spots aren't able to be captured. So when we talk about points and every position is a point, everything kind of stacks up. We talked about it about half the time, you know, the cut line ends up being three points or less. So, I mean, every point really 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 matters and you see how important it is playoff guys all stacked up in the top eight in stage one everybody receiving points in the top 10 with the exception of Almondinger because AJ Almondinger not running the full-time cup series he runs full-time in the Xfinity series where he actually won yesterday uh, at this racetrack for the fourth time in a row okay so a lot of conversation about all these strategies let's just talk about the results real quick Everyone on the racetrack has come to pit road. We showed you who scored points. That's why they did what they did. Well, on the other side of that strategy, look at all these non-playoff cars up here. Reddick and Allmendinger now are on the front row. Chase Elliott, while he's a playoff driver, he won a week ago, so he's already moved forward. Next to him, Justin Haley. Then you have McDowell, Christopher Bell, playoff driver, but he's a must win, so he doesn't care about points. That's why he's up here. We also see that one of Chastain. What is he in the uh, fifth row on the inside? He started last, so he didn't really have the chance for this great strategy call. We'll see if this plays out. Uh, it's going to be a completely different feel at the front of this field when we start this second stage, Marty. Steve, a big development for Chase Briscoe, who did get four stage points in stage one. The left front, they are not sure that it's completely tight. They debated on coming down pit road. Johnny Klausmeyer just made the call. If we come down now, we're going to give up way too much. So they asked Chase Briscoe to ride it out. Steve, they said they put the jack down too early. Explain why that would make the left front not tight. Well, on these next-gen cars, the single lug nut aluminum wheel, they really need to be tightened in the air. Once the weight of the car is on it, it doesn't want to tighten up. We'll see if this call works out for the 14 car. Chase car moves on to pit road and the field now approaching the Geico restart zone as we get ready to kick off stage two here at the Roval. Reddick and Almendinger battling through two. And on to three, Reddick has a spot, Almendinger all over his back bumper. A.J. Almendinger announced this week he will be going full-time cup racing as we see a little contact back there. Michael McDowell, one of the cars in the 34, but Almendinger will run full-time in the cup series in 2023 for Colleague Racing. It's a nervous time for all these point guys. You can see how tight the racetrack is and everybody's bunched up. Really easy to make contact, damage your car. 
And by the strategy that these guys in the front have chosen, this is the race for the win between Reddick and Almendinger. You have to push hard. If you feel like you can drive away from that 16 car in second place after a few laps, you've got to push hard right now to stay in front of him, not give up that track position. That's a great point, Dale, because these guys, we assume, are going to do the same thing again. These guys are the race for the win, and it couldn't be more important for anybody but that 20 of Christopher Bell in the playoffs. Had such a great first round, uh, and it has not gone right in the second round in a must-win situation. As we show all these playoff drivers, we have a whole other group of guys. <laughs> Joey Logano, Briscoe, Suarez, Byron Blaney, they are all way back in traffic. A little bit closer to the front here, though, is Christopher Bell. And running in the sixth position, Chase Elliott ahead of him in the fourth spot. But Christopher Bell coming in, they must be thinking it's a must-win situation. Right now, 27 points below the cutoff line. Christopher Bell has won before on a road course. This is his opportunity to advance into that round of eight. If he wins today, it ha <laughs> I'd have to call that an upset because I haven't seen the pace in the car so far. we got a battle right here between AJ and the 16 there on the inside, the eight car Reddick. Reddick's gonna give it to him. Pull in behind here, try to get a little bit of a draft down this straightaway into a breaking zone. He's in position to really bring it back to him. AJ's gonna block. Stop any kind of option there for the 18 to be offensive into this chicane on the back straightaway. Haley draws in there in the 31. Haley's got some great pace today. You have to imagine he's leaning on that 16, his teammate of AJ Allmendinger to find the pace in this car as well. Colleague cars one and three right now at the front of the field. We'll see what A.J. Allmendinger can do now. And he's no stranger to the front of the field in a cup race on a road course. He's won at Indianapolis, the Indianapolis road course in a cup car. And colleague, Matt, you know, Matt has pretty much found a way to be a winning team in the Xfinity Series, and this is the dream of this organization is to be at the front of the field on Sundays. Maybe seeing a glimpse of what we might witness next year and beyond with colleague racing. Well, A.J. Allmendinger running full time in the Cup Series will be a threat. Uh, he is going to be competitive on every road course race. Later in his career, he's, I think, better than he was early in his career. I think he's settled. He's more focused. Better race car driver than he's been at any point in his career that I see, Marty. And that's a terrific point, Jeff. Talking to A.J. Allmendinger earlier this week, he told me, I'm in a way better place than I was when I was last a full-time Cup Series driver, and I want to do this. I want the challenge of running Cup Series races. We've talked about it, but there have been four Xfinity races at the Roval. A.J. Allmendinger's won every one of them, Kim. He wants to add a Cup Series win here, too. And Marty running behind him, Tyler Reddick, and despite this team being eliminated from the playoffs after Bristol, they're still racing like they're after a championship. Tyler won Texas and he told me their goal, keep winning. They want to win a race in the next round and finish ahead of the championship four drivers in Phoenix. They want to prove, despite being out of the title run, they are still a championship caliber team. Yeah, three wins already on the season, Kim, and they've got to feel good about the momentum that they're building with this program. I want to give Randall Burnett, see a battle for position right here. I want to give Randall Burnett and that whole team Kudos, you know, when Tyler Reddick announced that he was leaving, everybody said, oh, no, they're not going to run any good anymore the rest of the year. They, they're done, and they're not. They have fought and have done a great job winning races, contending for wins. They have not let down one bit since that announcement. Yeah, the timing of the announcement was a little bit odd, and Richard Childress didn't appreciate it. They had just won a race. They knew they were going to be in the playoffs. They make the announcement, but then he has won two races since then, showing his commitment and this team's commitment to getting this car into victory lane. Again, that's Tyler Reddick, about seven tenths of a second behind A.J. Allmendinger right now, running in the second spot. Steve, once again, we will see a lot of these drivers, at least the top ten, uh, they'll try to flip the stage again. Well, they'll come a little bit before the end of stage two, uh, make sure they get their stop in because they know a caution is coming. Yeah, and these guys are all racing, though, as Dale pointed out. They're racing against one another because they know they're on that same strategy, the one car of Ross Chastain being the car that perhaps might take a different approach. He may choose to stay out, and if he does, he'll have a great chance to win this stage, Dave. 
Steve doing the kinds of things he needs to do after that team spent an extra eight and a half hours repairing this car for this race. I asked Phil Surgeon, his crew chief, if going aggressively through the field would be part of the plan today, maybe making a few more enemies for Ross. He said, it is not in the playbook. Our car will be fast enough to pass them on track. We've got a great pit crew, and we'll try to pit him out of strategy. Remember, they were one of the first to come to pit road, pitting on lap 20. So far, so good to the plan for Ross. Ross Chastain, one of the five drivers, as we heard Steve Phelps uh, in Countdown to Green earlier today talk about what an amazing feat. Five first-time winners in the Cup Series this year, a part of that 19 different winners. Uh, Ross Chastain being one of those. Uh, Daniel Suarez was another. Tyler Reddick, another uh, part of those five that have won their first Cup Series race this season in this next-gen car. On board with Daniel Suarez, finished third in stage one. Now currently back in the 23rd position, trying to chase Joey Logano through traffic. Yeah, Joey's right there in front of him. Stenhouse is in front of Joey. And then Briscoe, who is sort of the, the leader of this group, the playoff drivers that came to pit road during the last stage. All those guys trying to find some track position, passing difficult though today. If there's no yellows to bunch this field up, I don't see these guys really progressing through the field. Up front, the highest running forward right now, Blue Oval, is Michael McDowell. Up there in that fifth position, the mind blowing Ford F 150 Lightning is here. You could win one during the NASCAR playoffs. Scan the QR code now, or you can visit NASCAR.com forward slash Ford Playoffs promo to get your chance to win the most innovative F 150 Ford has ever built. Almendinger up front. Logano led 27 laps early. Almendinger's been up front for four. Reddick's been up front for three. The next generation of Wi-Fi is here with supercharged speeds faster than a gig. Unbeatable internet. Made to do anything so you can do anything. Xfinity, proud premier partner of NASCAR. And the bumper cam right down on track level there. The Xfinity mobile 
cam from Chase Elliott's number nine. A great vantage point. We want to go through the field brought to you by DoorDash. Let's start off with race leader A.J. Allmendinger and Barty. Rick, it has been a wild 2022 season in the Cup Series. 19 different winners. A.J. Allmendinger can make it 20 on the season. I don't think anybody would have predicted that. Going into this section right here, the infield section, that's where A.J. says his car is a little bit loose. That's his biggest issue right now, but in the lead, leading seven laps so far, Kim. Right ahead of Tyler Reddick and this team frustrated. They're out of the playoffs, but they're channeling that frustration and using it as motivation. Their goal to win again before the end of the season. Reddick already a two time road course winner this season running ahead of Justin Haley. And I talked with Justin this morning and he acknowledged what a good playbook they have with A.J. Allmendinger on the team. And they felt like they could have a top 10 or 12 effort here today. Marty, they run in the third position. A moment ago, spotter Eddie DeHaan told Chase Elliott, we're in the perfect position. Well, how are they in the perfect position running fourth? Because they're fairly confident the three cars in front of them will flip stage two. Chase Elliott would take that playoff point because they need to collect as many of those as they can. That would advance also with them to the next round as well. So they may try and win this stage and be willing to bury themselves back in traffic, Kim. And Michael McDowell running in the fifth position. Crew Chief Blake Harris told me this morning they were going to be aggressive to get track position. We saw that when they short pitted stage one. Expect likely the same out of this stage. He said they just are need a little bit more drive off. Otherwise, this car really good. Feels like it's on rails as he runs ahead of Christopher Bell. Christopher told me this morning he was honest. He said, I'm extremely deflated and down after the first two races in this round because they know they're capable for racing for a championship and they feel like there are teams that will move on that this team has outperformed and that's extremely challenging on the mental side of things. He's putting an extra effort in here today toward keeping his head in the game guys. Great battle back at the back with the 99 of Daniel Suarez the 24 and the interesting thing guys is they're racing with each other. This same group of cars that came to pit road at the end of the stage are racing among themselves. They are not driving through the field Steve. So I wonder this strategy to get the stage points how is this going to work if they cannot move forward in that final stage? Well, I think the final stage is a concern, and this stage might be a concern. It takes about 26, 27 seconds for a team to come down pit road and put tires on. Why I say that is Daniel Suarez is currently 21, closing in on 22 seconds behind race leader A.J. Allmendinger with still 12 laps to go in this stage. So if he continues to lose time, some of the leaders will be able to pit and actually come out in front of them on the racetrack, still costing them points. So at some point, I think some of these playoff cars are going to be closing on an intersection. Do you stick with what you came up in here with, or do you go a different direction? As we see the 7 and the 48, it looked like both missing the backstretch chicane. Yeah, they entered in there side by side. They were battling for position, and we talked about it earlier. You know, it's very difficult to go through there side by side. Neither, neither one wanted to give that spot up down the back straight. <laughs> they're still arguing about it. Yeah, they're not happy about it. As they came into the trilogy chicane, here's what happened. Yeah, a little bit of contact. Noah Gregson, Corey LaJoy, both of them. <laughs> just, all right, I've got to stop. Got to get going again. I'll be honest. That's pretty funny. Uh, they don't. Think I know is. that Corey's not laughing, but dang gum, I am. Congratulations. You two being stubborn cost you both about <laughs> 10 spots. And it's happening right here in front of, you know, the 22. Legon, they're like, hey, man, can y'all sort this out or just get out of the way? Let us play through. It shows you how difficult it is. I mean, both of those guys just couldn't make the corner side by side. A little bit of contact and immediately they were messed up. Every spot, every position matters to these playoff drivers. They're trying to gain as much as they can. We saw the strategy at stage one. We'll see what kind of strategy we see at the end of stage two.
join Peyton Manning and his brother Cooper for the ultimate quiz show. Rival colleges go head to head. Capital One College Bowl on Fridays at 8, 7 Central on NBC and streaming next day on Peacock. Dave, what have you got for Pit Road? This car right here, Kevin Harvick, running right now in the eighth position. Don't forget this weekend, his normal crew chief, Rodney Childers, is working from the shop electronically feeding information and suggestions to interim crew chief Stephen Doran here at the racetrack. He's normally the race engineer taking over that position. So far, so good for Kevin. They didn't expect anything less other than Kevin making all the corners, putting the four car where it needs to be in position. That penalty, guys, I guess the appeal for it will be heard after this race, so they want to make sure Rodney got one of the suspended races under his belt. Three of the Blue Ovals running up inside the top 10 right now. McDowell is fifth, Cole Custer is seventh, and Kevin Harvick running in that eighth spot right now. Ross Chastain was running in the ninth place. Look at him come in the screen here in that back chicane. He did come to a complete stop, served his penalty. Off he goes. Only cost him one spot. He was running ninth. He's now in 10th. So that mistake, you know, hey, you drove in there. You learned something. You know where you can't go. You know it's too deep now. And it was one spot that it cost you. Jeff, I don't know if it would be your thought on that race car. If it was a little bit tighter this run than the last time, spots like that would be tough to navigate if you were expecting the car to turn better than it did the first run. Yeah, Dave, maybe just trying to carry the same speed and he just couldn't get the car turned. After a difficult weekend for Ross Chastain, he currently is being shown 33 points above the cut line. And when he came in, Ross Chastain was 28 above that cut line. So really, Steve, the one team, unless they think they're going to go out there and win the race, they just need to make sure that they finish this race in a, in a normal position, not, you know, wreck out of this race. But they could advance just by a, a, an average finish for the one team. Well, and I think they're going to have some opportunity to score points right here because in about four or five more laps, I think we're going to see another huge wave of cars coming to pit road and I believe that's going to off you know create an opportunity for the one to score some stage points. We watched the seven of Corey LaJoy miss the backstretch chicane with the 48 both served their stop penalty but the seven has kind of faded back now he is kind of the you see right there smoking another tire he is backed up right to the nose of these playoff drivers and their patients are going to run very thin with the seven. The pressure's on the 24 the 12 these playoff drivers to get some spots. And you talk about that 27 seconds. It'll take Almendinger and these guys to get on the pit road and exit pit road. A guy like Byron Blaney, they're 29, 30 seconds behind the leader of the race. So as Almendinger and everybody comes to pit road before the end of the stage, they will get out on the racetrack in front of them, presumably. And there are some drivers that have been able to drive up through the field. Briscoe, he's got himself to 17. Larson, he's to 19. Cindric, Hamlin, Blaney, they're 26, 27, 28. So some drivers can work through the field and others have not been able to. Yeah, and I think Briscoe is going to score a whole bunch of points as we continue to see a great battle here between the 2 and the 11. The 18 of Kyle Busch, I believe, has come to pit road, taking a play out of the ones playbook from earlier. Come get some fresh tires a little bit earlier, try to use them to his advantage off the rear bumper, the Toyota cam of Denny Hamlin. Marty, how about A.J. Allmendinger? Are they having problems with the shifter? Well, closing in on pit stops here at the end of stage two. They will plan to pit, but to your point, Rick, is there a problem on the 16? Listen in. I stuck a gear. I missed that. What did he say? Stuck a gear. Just to keep up calm here. Yeah, it's weird, though. It just, for some reason, stuck a gear. Rest the piss out of it. So what he is saying, Steve, is he's saying it's getting stuck in second gear occasionally, and it will way over rev the engine. It's happened two or three times now. Matt Swiderski, his crew chief, just told me that's my concern. I'm I'm concerned he's done harm to the engine. A.J. Allmendinger in the lead right now at the Roval. Well, that's better than having no second gear. I thought no second gear, he's going to have a real trouble running pit road speed. That's the gear that the drivers use. Now, damage to the engine, always a concern. We'll have to check in. Five laps to go in the second stage.
Just three laps remaining in stage two of the NASCAR Cup Series playoffs on NBC. Bank of America Roval 400 and a lot of pit stops taking place now, Kim. Including Christopher Bell, you see him there on your screen. He told me he feels like the car has drivability, but it just does not have the pace. A little slip up there, dropping the gun as they ran around the front of the car. Four tires for Christopher Bell as they fill it up full of Sunoco fuel. Very interested to see which drivers decide to do what. No real surprises yet. All of these cars expected to pit. We saw Denny Hamlin come to pit road. Now the 48, Dave. Noah Gregson to pit road here for the 48, filling in for Alex Bowman. Good run for him so far after he had the drag race with Corey LaJoy. No harm, no foul there. He leaves pit road. So now what we're going to see is we see now Bubba Wallace in the 45 getting service. Behind him, the 7 of Corey LaJoy getting service. I assume the 16 of A.J. Allmendinger, as the leader, he could pit this next time coming to two to go. So the 16, the 8, the 31 will pit. I think the first real decision is the 9. Does the 9 of Chase Elliott stay out to win the stage, or do they pit right here and take the strategy to try to win the race? He'll be the fourth car. He's pitting. He's pitting, so he's going to give up the stage win to try to stay on strategy to actually try to win the race. And with these guys brings everyone, if you can believe it. Kim. And you see Tyler Reddick right there. He said, we cannot be any tighter, but this thing needs more forward drive off. A little air pressure adjustment as he finishes his service. Four tires, snow go fuel, Marty. AJ Allmendinger coming on pit road, gives up the lead, but just like a good coordinator making an adjustment at halftime, Steve, Alan Gustafson giving up that playoff point because he saw it was so hard to come back up through the field. It was not worth it. So they're foregoing what they thought would be a sure playoff point for Chase Elliott to bring him to pit road here and flip the stage. Well, I think they're close enough to win this race, so I like this call for the nine car. Uh, try to win races. We talk a lot about points, but sometimes you want to try to win some races. Well, and that's five playoff points. If you win the race, you're actually you're trading one possible playoff point for five points. And a trophy. Yes. And another race win when you get inducted into the Hall of Fame. And, and you know, <laughs> we talk a lot about this, but the goal is winning races, and I love the fact that the nine is going to stick with that goal. And now, You've got all these guys on old tires trying to get stage points. Some new tires around them. The eight car on new tires trying to get around this 14. Briscoe's going to try to fight hard. It's going to be tough to make this work, but the eight car is going to get around him here. You also have Chase Elliott back there in ninth place, possibly driving up through these cars as the laps wind down here at the end of the stage. Less than two to go from the Roval for stage two. We ride along the Mahindra tractors on board with Chase Briscoe. So right here, we're going to kind of reset the field, right? So we see the one of Chastain coming into the picture. He's the leader. He's going to win this stage kind of driving away. 21 of Harrison Burton also stayed on the racetrack. Kyle Larson, playoff driver. He's going to run third, barring a major issue in the final lap. A.J. Allmendinger was so fast, he's pitted and came back out to fourth, as Dale was mentioning. And then this right here is an absolute disaster. Old tires, new tires, playoff drivers. It is crazy to try to get to this final lap. Suarez just took advantage of a good battle right there. Got in that front chicane. Had, they all had some trouble. Suarez came out in the front. Looking back from the Coca-Cola cam on Suarez's car. And a lot of chaos back there. Everyone fighting for position, even a little bumping and banging. Briscoe on the outside. He's going to fight here, Rick. He wants to keep these positions. He's going to have to give that one up. Logano takes it away, but the bumper to the back of the 22 from Briscoe. And now the nine also right on the back of Brian Blaney. Blaney's going to get around on this 14. Can he get a little bit of a draft here? Close in on the breaking zone. I don't think he'll be in position to be able to make a move here in this backstretch chicane. It's a tough chicane to race somebody into. Blaney doing a little defensive move, making sure nobody behind him can make a move. See Cindric aggressive into here. He grabs a couple spots away. Byron in that 24 car trying to get around this nine. His teammate at Chase Elliott. And Ross Chastain grabs the stage two win. It's his first stage win on a road course, even though he's won at Coda and Talladega. Already this year, Harrison Burton finishing second in the stage. Larson getting points as well. Suarez, Logano, Briscoe, Blaney, all playoff drivers fighting for those points. 
trying to get as many as they can, every position counting. The Bank of America Fan Camp showing the fans here one stage to go on this beautiful afternoon in Charlotte. Two stages complete here from the Charlotte Roval. Kyle Larson finished third in stage two. Now I mentioned that because I had mentioned earlier in catching up with the five team earlier today, Cliff Daniels wasn't happy with the way that they qualified starting this race 16th. Well, now getting stage points here, two stages in. Definitely on par with what they were hoping for today. Cliff said the number one goal was just to get enough points to advance to the next round of the playoffs. The team is very much doing so. If they could accomplish that, goal number two would be to maybe get some stage points. Check there too. Goal number three, of course, would be to battle for a win. So with one stage left to go, we'll see if that five team can accomplish all three of those goals, despite having a bit of a rocky start to the weekend. NASCAR on NBC is brought to you by Progressive. Revving up the savings on home and auto insurance. Visit Progressive.com. And by Bank of America. What would you like the power to do? And looking back from the Coca-Cola Pace Cam. Again, Ross Chastain winning that stage. Uh, stage two complete now. And we have an IndyCar star in the field, Rutledge. How about Connor Daly today? Man, it's been so cool to watch Rick. He's in that 50-bit now car. And you know what? His goal this weekend was really to just get experience. A lot of us got to see at the Indy 500 this year when he was leading laps, watching all the fans there stand up at Indianapolis Motor Speedway on their feet for him. But today it's all been about learning. He only got about 10 minutes in the car yesterday before the steering went out and he hit the wall. Bounced back from that, though. Uh, obviously, he's trying to learn a lot, take as much as he can. He's got a huge interest in being a part of anything motorsports related. And his friend Alexander Rossi is here this weekend supporting him. Really cool to see an open wheel guy over here giving it a shot at the Roval, Rick. And you see friends and family. Connor said that there were going to be a lot of friends and family. Obviously, Alexander Rossi, a friend of Connor Daly here cheering him on. And I want to go down to the Peacock Pit Box where KP and DJ are once again. All right, guys. Is there a possibility that you can talk us through today's Northern Tool and Equipment <laughs> race recap? Would that be all right? There's a possibility, but the only word I have for it is wow. <laughs> yeah. You go, Dale. You go. Yeah. It's been an interesting afternoon, to, to say the very least, in the start. The fastest guy here was Joey Logano. He took off and got himself out front. But it already started early. As you can see, here's Austin Dillon, mission the chicane coming. Had to come to a full stop, which he did not, and later had to make a, a trip down pit road to serve that penalty. And we see Bubba, Bubba as he turns into the corner, it just steps out on him. And then he locks it up. A little bit later, he has to pit. That's the tire. That's what happens when you lock a tire up on this. Yeah, jo Joey Logano then went on to lead every lap in stage one, uh, get the valuable 10 points that he was looking for there, plus a playoff point. This was a little crazy on pit road. We see Daniel Suarez leaving, and we see Bubba. He misses his pit. He can't get in. He's trying to get out of the way, but Daniel loses four valuable points or four valuable positions on pit road. Yeah, you can see right here, Ross Chastain 
trying to come back and get things righted here. He had to stop there, but he was able to recover from that and go on and get 10 valuable points for him in winning stage two. Kim? And a great points grab for Kyle Larson finishing third in that stage. He said, I need a little help turning to the right. Loose under braking in the left. So as you see the change top left, they make a chassis adjustment. He said, I'm not terrible, but guys, I'm not amazing either. A little vibration, Dave, at the end of that run. Trackhouse racing, upper right, lower left. Chastain, the stage winner. Car tightened up at the end. Suarez car pretty well balanced. Made a couple of nice passes near the stage end, Marty. Paul oh, Wolf told Joey Logano, man, I'm sorry I had to do that to you, but we had to have those stage points. Now 14 in the bank for Joey Logano. Will that be enough to carry him to the round of eight. He said, when you're in traffic, the car is so extremely tight, hard to pass. But when I'm out front, I go, hey, I'm actually pretty good. And the race off pit road sees Ross Chastain holding on to that top spot. Larson and Suarez gaining a position. Make sure to download the official app of NASCAR. You can follow the action with free live scoring. There's in-car cameras as well as radio broadcasts. Just search NASCAR in your app store, and you can download and start a free trial today. Well, from boating to off-roading and more, going fast doesn't stop at the track. So make sure to fuel your summer with a cooler full of ice-cold Mountain Dew. Mountain Dew, get out and do. That's what the fans are doing here today. Enjoying this, the final race of the round of 12. We look at the points through two stages. These are just the stage points that people have been able to earn. Logano, 14, Larson, 13. So important for these playoff drivers, but does this jeopardize the possibility of a win, Steve? Well, it's definitely going to hurt their opportunity to win because to win these stage points, they're going to lose some track position. But I think this is exactly what everybody needed to do. Um, who were in the playoffs because, you know, kind of you've earned these points. They can't be taken back away. Wherever Joey Logano finishes, he has earned 14 points. That's 14 positions in the finish of the race. Every position is a point. He knows he has 14 from the stages. Uh, we've seen the last stage of this race be absolute chaos. There's 56 laps to go. So um, 
while the first two stages looked relatively calm and straightforward, I expect these next 56 to be anything but. One stage to go. Let's get a few updates from Pit Road. We'll start with Kim. Interesting strategy call for the two of Austin Sendrick. They ended up finishing 12th, grabbing no stage points, and crew chief Jeremy Bones came on the radio, apologized, said, I should have done something differently. We should have short pitted, but that's not the biggest problem for this team. Take a listen. It's taken us 33 races of the year, but my uh, rear view camera is finally failing. Copy that. And Austin has turned it off and back on. Seems to be back and working, but he's going to keep an eye on it, Dave, to see if it causes more problems throughout this final stage. Denny Hamlin always wants to know what the situation is. Chris Gabehart explains. I think we're in a pretty good spot here. Uh, cut line, I think we gave up about four points on it total throughout the stages. Your um, bottom four car of it, best position to win at the moment is the 20 and 7. And for Chase Elliott, I just talked to Alan Gustafson a moment ago about kind of foregoing what they did earlier on and not going with the pregame plan and giving up that playoff point. Steve, he said, just wasn't worth it. He said, I would take us out of shot to win this race. I didn't want to do that. Well, and here he is. I agree because here is Chase Elliott, right? Starting inside the front two rows, ranked with 56 to go. Everyone needs one more pit stop. Field going through the Geico restart zone, and it's Almendinger and Rennick making up row one. Almendinger on the inside. You see Chase Elliott on the inside of row two. And Reddick surging ahead now of that 16 of Almendinger as they go through turn two and head to three. Tire lock up right there. McDowell on the inside right now of the four of Harvick. Now he's dropped back to the 41 of Cole Custer. Going to see a lot of guys get more aggressive than we've oh. ever seen on restarts for positions right there because it's so hard to pass. Once these cars get single filed out, passing is non-existent, so they're going to have to be absolutely aggressive on the restarts. This initial lap right here, you cannot make mistakes you can't get moved around moved offline and give up positions you will not get them back a lot of contact right here gonna have some guys yeah three and four wide trying to go through the trilogy chicane and it doesn't pay off for some Corey lajoy we saw tire smoke there they haven't settled it yet and now they're going to go into this front chicane and it is just as difficult side by side suarez in the middle of this chaos he does not want to be here Oh, the seven car sliding a the tire there. Daniel getting all kinds of contact on all four corners. Cars in defense there coming off the exit of the corner. Yeah, Loris Hesseman in the 27 and some more contact now. Beating and banging. Tempers running a little bit thin. Look at the difference. I'd rather be up front. Seems a little bit. <laughs> A little bit calmer up front. Single file, relatively polite at the moment. Marty. Chaos uh, all of a sudden here in stage three for playoff driver Chase Briscoe. You're right on board with him right now. He had some contact on that restart. And Stevie said the toe is now knocked out on the 14 car. What kind of handling problems will that present for him for the rest of the race? Well, assuming he's meaning the front toe, I, it would just take grip away from the front. It hardly make the car push a little bit. Remember, with the independent rear suspension, we've seen those toe links bend front and rear, so we're not sure exactly which side he's or which end of the car he's complaining about riding on board. It's hard to really tell if the steering wheel is straight. You see the two different markings, one for on the racetrack and one for during the tire change. The white line, assuming that's the one that should be straight up, looks normal. We'll have to just keep an eye on the 14 to see if this is something that hurts the handling as he goes. He's done a nice job up to 18th so far. I mean, that's 11 spots in the restart. Now look at the spokes. Steve, and it looks like maybe the red mark is the center of the steering wheel, and it's off to the left just a little bit. I see what you mean. Yeah, that's the center of the two spokes. Yes. So we mentioned the chicane and the chaos that took place. Take another look. Well, look, look what happens behind. All this damage, all this contact, they start stacking up in front, and everybody behind just starts piling into it. Yeah, the contact for the 14s off the left front of the seven car down toward the middle of the chicane. See the seven turns into the 14 right there. Bam. 
Hard contact into the right front. Let's ride on board with Briscoe. Watch the steering wheel. See how straight it is? Boom! Look how it grabs, almost turns the wheel almost 180 degrees when that rack steering wheel is hit. Now you see it's, it's turned just a little bit. It's, a, it's about at 11 o'clock or on the, you know, on the, that red line is offset just a little bit now. So I do believe that he has a little issue with the toe. Not sure how that's going to perfect the performance. Still up front, it's Reddick holding off Almendinger by four tenths of a second. Elliott right there in striking distance, and this could come down to a better pit stop by well, one of these teams. Yeah, everyone has to make a pit stop, but unlike the first and the second stop where you knew when the yellow was going to come out because the end of the stage, now the stress is when you come to pit road, really we figure they can run 38 laps on fuel, so that's when the window would open. 38 laps to go as we expect. You know, drivers at least have the option to come to pit road. We'll see how long they decide to run. In a perfect world, you would come to pit road and the yellow would come out for an accident. If you could shake your magic eight ball and tell me exactly when the yellows are going to come out, I'll tell you exactly when you should pit, Nate. And part of that scrum that we saw, the contact on the restart there, Ryan Blaney was involved in that right front fender contact. They don't think it's any problem right now, but something to keep an eye on for Blaney. The other thing that makes this race so stressful is, you know, there are still th over 35 cars on the lead lap, 38 to be exact. So, you know, when you look at those points, you say, oh, well, Blaney's plus 22, Chastain's plus 24. If you have a flat tire or an issue and you're running very well, you could lose 24 spots on the last lap of this race. You're going to have to be good all the way through the last corner to make sure you advance in these playoffs. See a little bit of smoke coming out of the 21 and maybe a little damage to that right rear of Harrison Burton. He got popped pretty good in the right rear quarter panel there, right in the bumper. Just kind of bent that quarter panel out a little bit. Pretty interesting strategy from those guys, Steve. They were running about 12th, 13th, 14th, and decided to stay on track and not pit at the end of that stage, and that put them back there in the middle of the chaos. Yeah, that was the one that I had a little head scratching about. I don't know if they're in a points battle with someone else or if there was maybe miscommunication. As we see now, getting pressure from Joey Hand in that 15 car. Uh, but I was expecting Harrison Burton to come to pit road, and he chose not to before the stage end. I think the one thing that bothers me or, or worries me, I guess, is for these drivers who stayed out for the stage points is, you know, we talked about how we have an average of 10 missed chicanes at this race. We're not having that today. We're not having the general mistakes that we typically see at this racetrack. These guys have a lot more grip, a lot more control. This is a road racing race car that seemed to perform much better on the road racing tracks drives better they're in they're you know way more under control with these cars so we don't see the crashing the the, the full course cautions that we tend to have i don't know how these guys will be able to get that track position back they're not going to be able to you know if we don't have yellows you can't close up the field to give them a chance to throw a different strategy at or be aggressive on restarts steve's pit window opens up in about 11 laps. So Tyler Reddick out front. The NASCAR Cup Series playoffs on NBC. The Bank of America Roval 400 continues. Eight laps complete here in stage three. And as we just kicked off this stage, the field was bunched up a little bit there from that restart. And we're getting an opportunity to see these guys really take it to each other on the oval side of this course, which is something that drivers like Mike Rockenfeller, making just his second series start, was anxiously anticipating about racing in the Cup Series. It's going to be cool in the race, you know, maybe to get some sense of being pushed or push somebody and, and being side by side or three wide. I think it's it's cool because that's what I think is, you know, NASCAR is all about. It's the oval racing. And and uh, for me as a road course racer, it's nice to get that little bit of a, let's say, feeling how it might be in an oval race and a real oval race. So I think it's a nice combination to have both. 
Now, now to Mike's point, not the same oval racing that we're used to, given that this is still half of a road course. But as these laps tick down here in this race with playoff spots on the line, we can anticipate that great aggression that he describes coming into play. NASCAR fans, don't let anything pass you by. The official app of NASCAR Tracks lets you stay up to date on the latest race and event information from all of your favorite tracks. Search NASCAR Tracks in the App Store to download for free. In the final stage here, and the fans have had a, a very enjoyable day. Uh, perfect weather here. 48 laps to go still in the final stage. First stage won by Joey Logano, second stage won by Ross Chastain, both playoff drivers that are hoping to gain as many points as they can. And the reason for that, you look at this, 25 playoff cutoff races. And since 2014, 12 times the final spot has been decided by three points or less. And right now, as they're running, it's 12 points that are separating the two that are on either side of the cut line, that's Daniel Suarez and Chase Briscoe. And now that the two stages are done and they're running to the finish, Steve, we could break this down even more and clearer for these fans and drivers to know exactly what these guys have to do. Well, what you see right now is very clear, right? How many points you are behind or ahead, and that's a position on the racetrack. So Suarez has a 12-point gap over Briscoe. Suarez running 24th, Briscoe running 18th. So. Uh, you know, if you want to see that 12 points, if you're a Chase Briscoe fan, you need Suarez to lose a few spots and you need Briscoe to gain a few spots and find that 12 points somewhere on the racetrack, Kim. Talk to Connor Daly this morning. He was very excited about this race today, but maybe that excitement literally going up in flames. Take a listen to the radio. It's the center console under the mirror. Center console under the mirror. It's on fire just a little bit. Get a little fire there. No, it's not, but it keeps, it keeps sparking and catching on fire right here in the middle, the black wires. So you see Connor right now sitting on pit road trying to diagnose and alleviate that problem. Sounds like some sort of an electrical fire. I know we have seen some fires in the rocker panels, but there's been some rule changes that have seemed to alleviate that. And that sounded more like a, some sort of electrical problem underneath the dash for the 50. So probably will end his day as the 99 continues to battle with the two of Cindric, Dave. And he's going backwards right now, Steve. First, listen to this radio. I need a seven to get the f out of the way. My engine is getting hot and the steering wheel is I'm losing assistance, man. I don't want, I don't want to wreck you. Right, so he was angry with Corey LaJoy, could not get by him. The car began to overheat, and then he was saying, I'm losing assistance. It's a steering rack with power steering assistance, and if you lose that power steering, guys, we've heard, even in the test here last year, you can't drive these cars. That is the problem. It's not the overheating of the engine, it's the steering. He's lost power steering assist. Look at the steering wheel as it shakes. It, vib it actually vibrates. Is he vibrating? That is his major problem right now. Look at that. You can see it's a problem. That's not going to fix itself either, Steve. No, that is not going to fix itself. And those points I was talking about for Chase Briscoe has gone from 12 to 7 because Suarez is losing spots down to 29th. We mentioned how many cars were in the lead lap. 37 now with Connor Daly's issue under the hood He's or under the dash so right there are points for Suarez to lose those seven points can be lost just by him going backwards that's exactly what he's doing right yeah. now he's got more and more positions to lose in this race and, and as those cars go by him the number continues to go down now only five points in front of Briscoe his last lap on the racetrack guys about almost six seconds off the pace of the lead cars he came in third 
Came in plus 12. He's earned the third most points today. But this is going to be very, very difficult, if not impossible. Look at his look at him. He's doing all he can. But he is falling to the field. He still has 46 laps to go. And Steve, nothing they could do about this when he comes to pit road? Well, I mean, we don't know that because I don't know exactly what's wrong with the steering system. Maybe they have a fluid leak. Maybe the, the fluid has got too hot. So if they could have a yellow, they could come down, open the hood, and try to repair. But to do it under green, uh, we only have one car. Danny Cavia is the only car out of the race. So you've got to go back to 38th and continue to lose spots. I think even as slow as he is on the racetrack, you just have to ride this out, hoping for a caution with 45 laps to go. And while he's doing that, man, he is wearing himself out. This is like full max bench press, corner after corner after corner, trying to get this car just to turn into the chicane right here. The force that he's having to apply is about as much as he can stand. Well, so what makes this so difficult is this next gen car doesn't have the old school steering box anymore. It has a rack and pinion that's hydraulically assisted. So let's take a look at our Toyota virtual car and talk specifically about the steering. We're going to go under the hood and show you what is new on this car, what is different. As I mentioned, not the same, not the old steering box, which you can kind of manually turn, even though it still is, is a deficient system without hydraulic fluid. That entire silver cylinder all the way across from left to right, that is the steering rack itself. It's hydraulically assisted by the cars itself. This is the component, right? So you see right here, this is the column coming down. That's what Daniel is steering. And then you see the shiny silver area that basically goes from here all the way across right there. That is the rack itself. You see the lines on it, it's hydraulically assisted. When you lose fluid, either because it gets too hot, maybe you've had a seal fail, maybe one of those hoses is leaked, that's the component that's failing for Daniel Suarez. That component just doesn't work without the hydraulic assist. I mean, you see the force right now, it's probably- I see it, bud. I see it. I know it's tough. Dig deep here. There's nothing we can really do right now. They're just encouraging because they see it. They're watching this broadcast as well, Dave. They see the fight their driver's putting up. And that is Travis Mack. He is the cheerleader right now for Daniel Suarez. He is a big motivator on this team, and he's asking him for 100%. That is all that you can give me one turn at a time. Remember, these two fought hard at the beginning of the season for a win, almost won a Coda with the best car, finally won at Sonoma. It was each of their first win in the Cup Series, crew chief and driver. They'd like to fight to the end today, but with a car that'll make it. And as Suarez battles to go, you know, trying to not lose spots, Briscoe gained one right there. So now we're down to just two points between Suarez and Briscoe. There's Briscoe right you there. The 99, he's having some sort of issue. So you just keep your head down, keep fighting here. I like that. Hey, the information is he's having an issue. I'm not rooting against the 99. I need you to keep your head down. You worry about where this 14 car finishes. That's some great coaching from on top of the pit box. Seven stage points for Chase Briscoe. When I talked to him before the race, he said, I screwed up in qualifying, but I think we could fight back. I need to make it into the next round of the playoffs. That's what's at.
elevate your performance in the totally reimagined 2023 Toyota Sequoia is ready to take on any adventure from the campground to the racetrack. Visit NASCAR.com forward slash Toyota playoffs to enter for your chance to win one. We look down on Daniel Suarez from the Geico aerial and it has been a very tough battle these last few laps for Daniel Suarez. Dave, any sign that this team could do something to help him out? It's not like the activity when there's a flat tire and everyone goes to the wall with the new set of tires. Engineers are working on if there can be a plan because Daniel's radio to them is pretty desperate. We're still in right now. We're still a few points to the good. I don't have a thing, man, at all. If you get a plan, I won't be able to make it like this. Another week of that caution, I have to come in and fix this thing. It's got to be fixed. You see now Suarez has fallen one below the cut line, so they are currently out of the playoffs. You see how hard he's working on the steering wheel, and you guys know how hard these drivers all work to stay in shape, to stay strong, but man, even the human body in this car can't handle it without steering assist. Yeah, just having to change his hand position is just a tug on that steering wheel to get the car to turn left, to turn right. Daniel does work very hard, takes a lot of pride in his conditioning. And it's going to take every bit of it. It's still 40 laps to go. Suarez running 36th right now. Chase Briscoe running 17th. That separates them by one point. Right now, Chase Briscoe in. Daniel Suarez out. Marty. Does Chase Briscoe know what's going on with the 99? It's crazy, Rick, how dynamic these points can change in the Cup Series playoffs. Yes, he does know. We played that radio just a moment ago. But earlier, Steve, Chase Briscoe asked Johnny Klausmeyer, where are the points? And he wouldn't give him an update. He told me my reasoning was because it was too far to go in the race. We were way behind at that point, really didn't have a hope. And as soon as the 99 had a problem, he gave his driver an update. Little motivation and a little strategy in his mind for Johnny Klausmeyer, the crew chief, to his driver, Chase Briscoe. Well, let's talk about the flip side. So if you're a Briscoe fan, you're liking the fact that Suarez is having this issue. But if you're a Suarez fan, don't give up hope now. He's falling all the way to 36 means there's only a point or two he could lose at this point where Briscoe is running 17th. So if Briscoe doesn't hold up his end, right? If he has an issue, if they have a mistake, then instantly Suarez will be right back into that. Same thing if you're an Austin Cindric fan, right? He is currently seven points behind the 14 in 23rd. So this battle very quickly is going to be between the two and the 14 if the 99 is going to be unable to fix their car. And you see on the bottom left race strategy, the final pit window is open. It's open around lap 71. Why would you cut right now even though you don't need fuel? Put those fresh tires on, try to make them work, and hope to get a yellow. Kim? And Christopher Bell and this team knew they didn't have the pace to win, so they wanted to be the first to pit last and get that track position. Christopher saying he was losing his front. He wanted a little bit more grip as you see him finishing up this stop. First to pit last. Very easy to explain, Rick. The 20 has now serviced their car. If the caution comes out, the entire field will have to come to pit road still. The 20 will then instantly be the leader. So now if you're Tyler Reddick, you know you want to come a little bit early, but I don't think you're concerned about just one car. He's probably looking at, or at least Randall Burnett on top of the pit box, same for A.J. Allmendinger. They're going to watch how many cars pit. The leaders probably have a number, four, five, six. Once they get too many cars that have come to pit road, then they're going to want to come themselves, although 16 is not making it easy on the eight, putting <laughs> the pressure on them. And we continue to say the 99 needs a caution. Well, there have only been two cautions. They have both been for the stage breaks. Normally in this race, there have been eight cautions. So quite a few less cautions for this race, which is what Daniel Suarez needs right now. He needs a break. Yeah, the only chance that Daniel Take has. Take all the press and rest your hands down the straightaway. We gotta keep running, bud. We're gonna be right at it. There's not much straightaway, unfortunately, for Daniel to take a break. His only option is to be the caution. And I know that that's been frowned upon in the past, but I don't know that how else he might get one today. Nobody's making, you know, we're not seeing this car provide that type of opportunity. My only counter would be that we've had at least four in every final stage. So while we say we normally get them, yeah. they always come at the end. Someone is going to get frustrated, lose their temper, and we may see a yellow. Kim. Daniel's reminding his team we need a smooth, clean stop. You just saw them finish right there. Four tires to no-go fuel for Kyle Larson.
and you see Daniel Suarez on the top of the screen go a lap down to the 8 and the 16. Just, you know, all he can do is try to keep the car on the racetrack. Ah! He is so far off pace. You hear the frustration, and that's because he is in pain. That isn't, I mean, it's frustration of going a lap down, but he is, he's got, he's got to be coming to the end of his limit on his ability to drive this car, because watching him go around the banking, a, a part of the racetrack that should be flat out, should be able to make pretty good speed. He's not even able to run hard and wide open through that portion of the track. And he's seeing his playoff hopes go away if he doesn't catch a break, and that is emotionally so difficult. Marty. Alan Gustafson doing what he can to put his driver Chase Elliott in a position to win a second race in a row after winning at Talladega last week. He saw his teammate Kyle Larson pit. Chase said, I just can't get close to anyone. I need a clean stop. So they decided to bring him a little on the early side of the window here, running third when he came to pit road. Well, I mentioned the numbers. We'll forget the numbers of how many cars. That's the magic car for the eight of Tyler Reddick, the 16 of AJ Allmendinger. They know they do not want to give track position to that nine car. He now has fresh tires. I would be shocked if there's not a counter by these two leaders, as now we see Logano on pit road as well. Logano saying, I am free off of every corner, especially in the infield, really struggling through there. Paul Wolf made the call at the end of stage two to get those extra four stage points. Right now, Logano plus 16 above the cut line. Is it enough? We'll see what happens for the final 37 laps. So on the top, you see the leaders. I expect to see pit stops right here. I'd be shocked if they continue to run and allow Chase Elliott to have fresh tires. Nope, there's going to be a decision, but a split decision. Reddick pits. The 16 stays out. So as we watch Reddick come to pit road, keep in mind, look up in this area right here. We have the nine on the racetrack. Kim? And Reddick puts it in second gear, stops in front of his pit box. No complaints this run from Tyler, looking to steal another win from these playoff drivers after winning in Texas. Four tires and fuel for the number eight. Eight is very early on pit road, so we're going to see the jack drop. Now he, oh, it's a slow left side, waiting on fuel, or waiting on a tire. Looks like fuel. Now the nine's on the front stretch of Kane. Now the eight has a shorter distance because he's going to be able to take a hard left at the end of pit road. We see the nine cross the start finish line. He's going to go down into turn one. Yeah, way Make past the, the eight. turn. And there you go. It's not the race lead at the moment, but it could be the race lead if pit stops cycle around. A big pit stop by the nine is going to cycle Tyler Reddick behind Chase Elliott. And now we have Briscoe on pit road, Marty. Now you think about the scrappiness of the 14 team here in the round of 12 at Texas. They were terrible all race, made a ton of adjustments to the car last week at Talladega, a top 10. And here they might advance to the round of eight. Nice run for them. William Byron leaving pit road as well. He's saying his car just a little bit too free as well. Every car that's still in the racetrack holding their breath. They do not want a caution. Everybody who has pitted would have a huge advantage. Will this be the lap? A.J. Allmendinger decides to come to pit road. The more he runs, the more I think he's taking risk of giving this race away. Shocked the 16 is not pitting. I think this is a major mistake. I know we haven't seen a lot of yellows, but a yellow right now would put him behind every car. All right, there we go. Come this time. So maybe they want to be a little more comfortable in their fuel window. Now it's about clean on and off pit road, and can he find a way to leapfrog that nine of Chase Elliott? You have to imagine, Steve, after yesterday's race, seeing those green-white checkers, multiple green-white checkers for this very team to win that Xfinity race, they want to be on the safe side fuel-wise. Yeah, I bet you're right. As we see on the left side, all of the cars come to pit road. You see it in the pylon, and almost seven seconds difference between the pit stops. Chase Elliott, basically an 11-second pit stop. Tyler Reddick had almost an 18-second pit stop. That was the big difference. Dave. Here comes Denny Hamlin. He'll get four fresh Goodyear tires and then wait for a signal to go on fuel. Does not need a full fill. As for Ryan Blaney, no balance changes from the last time. The 12 car, he said you can go the same direction on the air pressure change you made last time. That'd be fine for me. So the 12, Blaney also on pit road. He's coming off. Blaney looking for every point he can get, every position so that he can advance. There's race leader, A.J. Allmendinger. Does he come this time? He was told to. All right, pitch this time. Second gear, one red, flashing two. At the line now. One All of right. the good things about this, there's only one other car on pit road, so not congested for A.J. Allmendinger. Marty. 
So far, AJ Allmendinger has led a race high 23 laps. Could he become the 20th Cup winner in 2022? AJ saying the car was really rolling over on the left rear. That was his biggest complaint. Matt Swiderski making the call to keep him out long, Steve. Now let's watch the blend. Yeah, well, the nine on the racetrack, but the 16 almost at the end of pit road. This is going to be, I think, a little bit closer than it was for the eight car. We're going to see the left sides go on to 16, the nines into turn one. It's just a simple number of laps. New tires for the nine of Chase Elliott, a huge advantage. I just am frustrated by this call for the eight and the 16. They have handed Mr. Road Course Racer Chase Elliott control of the Roval with 34 laps to go. And the 16 of Allmendinger also came out behind the eight of Tyler Reddick. McDowell out front here at the Roval. Seventy five laps complete here from the Charlotte Roval. When you take a look at that running order, the 48 for Hendrick Motorsports currently running 11th. But Alex Bowman not behind the wheel once again this week. Unfortunate circumstances put Noah Gregson in that race car. Bowman still looking to get through clearing concussion protocol before he can return to competition. But these laps are incredibly valuable for Gregson, who announced earlier this season that he will go full time cup racing next year. Year. He'll be driving the 43 Chevrolet for Petty GMS in the 2023. So again, unfortunate circumstances that's giving Noah this track time, but impressive what he's doing here early in this early in his Cup Series career. Currently filling in for Alex Bowman driving that 48. Elevate your taste buds with the new Sonic Chop House Cheeseburger, decadently layered with crispy onion strings, a creamy Chop House aioli over an all-beef patty with two slices of American cheese and served on a toasted brioche bun for a limited time at Sonic. And want to take a look at the Toyota Driver updates where the Toyota drivers are running currently the highest scored Toyota is Christopher Bell in seventh, Kyle Busch 11th, Mark Truex Jr. 14th, Ty Gibbs 19th, and Bubba Wallace back in 22nd. And while we were away, we did see the one of Ross Chastain come to pit road. Yeah, and the point situation is really pressure packed for Chase Briscoe, right? Daniel Suarez, we, we've kind of documented his issues with steering, currently 37th. Even if he falls out, he's going to lose one more point. So now, really, the pressure is on this man. Chase Briscoe to continue to do what he's doing right now he's good enough he's plus two but he's running 16th I mean so much can happen in 32 laps of this race he cannot afford to lose any spots and if you're Cindric down there at minus 10 you're running 25th on the track there are positions available for Cindric and there are positions available for Briscoe to lose if he does have an issue Dave and Steve the mechanics are working on a plan to do something when Daniel comes to pit road uh, well, down below, you'll see what I believe is going to be the power assist pump replacement for the one that's in there now. The time is going to be the issue, Steve. What I think is if they can make this happen and recharge the system, it's just to get Daniel to the end. And with Kafiat out and Daly down a lap and perhaps going out, can Suarez limp his points home? So what Dave's pointing out right there is I had showed you the rack, but this part right here, if we zoom in, there you go. So this right here, is the actual power steering pump. So that hose goes to the rack I showed you. That pulley right there gets spun by the motor. Interesting enough, uh, 
a couple college cars and some RCR cars yesterday had issue with power steering. The systems are totally different. The one consistent part, that pump, you have to ask yourself if maybe they have an issue or maybe they figure that's the only thing that can change in time. Uh, it might not be the fix. It might be their only option to fix, and they're going to hope it fix it. Let's listen into the 99. I don't know if I'm going to make it, man. 10 I know. Get angry. Screaming if you have to. Take deep breaths. Deep breath, brother. I know it's hard, man. And Steve, one thing I was told was that the system cannot be recharged. They just can't simply recharge the system as it's lost all the fluid. And you can hear Daniel just suffering behind the wheel. It's a hydraulic system. And once you kind of get air in it, we've all you know, dealt with them in our lives. Once that air gets in the wrong spot, you don't have the assist. And, and Daniel really, I know it looks uh, like he's, he's you know, kind of cruising around here. But this fight, I mean, we've all been in that position, right? Whether you do push-ups until you can't even pick yourself up anymore. Think he is fighting this car for all it's worth every time he has to turn the wheel. He'll never complain about being uncomfortable in a race car again because this is probably the worst experience he's ever had, never will. He tries to figure out how to get this car a few more laps around the racetrack before they bring him to pit road. It's all he can do just to ride basically pit road speed through that portion of the racetrack. He can't go any harder. It is. It is torture inside that car. No power steering assist for the 99 of Daniel Suarez and Marty. What about the 16 in Allmendinger? Have they talked about this strategy? Yeah, Rick, so we have the question of why did A.J. Allmendinger pit so far after Chase Elliott? In fact, three laps. I did check in with Chris Rice, team president for College Racing, and see if he said that's how far off our fuel mileage is. He said we're not only good to make it to the end of the race now, but we had to go further for at least one overtime finish. But would it make sense to you, Steve, how they're three laps off of other Chevrolet cars? Well, that would be frustrating if they were that far off, but the stories kind of contradict. Was that their number, or did they want to be for overtime? It's kind of one or the other one overtime Steve they said they're good for yeah it. but that, I mean, that's two extra laps so I would imagine the nine probably didn't build in those two extra laps now if we have a yellow AJ Allmendinger they're gonna look genius because they're gonna have enough fuel you can never never guess how these races are going to end so I understand all these decisions are calculated uh, he has good pace in the 16 you see he's run down Tyler Reddick for the second position the concern is Chase Elliott four seconds out there I would bet Rick that over the next 29 laps, he can probably save enough fuel for an overtime with a four-second lead. Things are tightening up for second, but they still have to reel in Chase Elliott out there in front here at the Roval. In watching this race, you may notice there's a little bit of extra color in the field today. Every single driver racing with a bright pink window net. There's also a little extra pink, as you'll notice the pit wall has been painted pink this week too. All of this is due to Kurt Busch, who unfortunately is still not racing. He's out with concussion symptoms, but is still making his presence known for the second year in a row with his Window of Hope campaign. So what this is, is every driver running these pink window nets after this race will auction off a signed window net, and the proceeds from that auction will go back to benefiting Atrium Health Levine Center Cancer Institute's Project Pink, which essentially will help fund can breast cancer screenings for women who cannot afford them. So again, Kurt Busch unable to be here and competing this weekend, but still making his presence known and doing wonderful things and giving back to the racing community.
Daniel Suarez has finally hit pit road at the Charlotte Roval. The team will go to changing the Goodyear tires. They're giving him fuel to get to the end. Will they go into the hood? Yes, they will. They need to get men back over the wall so they don't have too many over the wall. Now the hood pins will come out. The hood will be raised. You see the hydraulic fluid there ready to go. They'll try to change that pump so that he can have some sort of steering assist and try to lift this car back to the end. But right now losing valuable time on track. Steve, what do you think? Is there a chance they get this done? Well, you see the challenge right here. You can't see anything, right? You see their air intake into the motor. You see the air vents. So they are adding the fluid. They're trying to take a look underneath there. You know, our, our virtual car makes it look simple because I virtually remove all the parts that are going to be in the way. Under this hood, extremely hot. A lot of parts and pieces in the way. You see right there, they put some fluid in it. We'll see if that is enough for the 99. Dave, how about this one of Chastain? He seems to be a, a bit off the pace as well. So Suarez teammate Ross Chastain had contact with the wall. Listen. The right rear is out of line. I can't go wide open on the straightaway or in the banking. I think we got to keep running here, even if we can't go whole pace. So the 99 car, difficult to drive. Will it be fixed? The one car, now tough to drive after he hit the wall, and it's out of alignment. Tough day for track house racing. They're so fast on this track. You can see on that shot, as he was cresting that heel, that right rear shaking, vibrating violently on that car. You have to wonder what's bent, what's broken, what will fail even more. As you said, Steve's got to stay away from curbs yeah, and such that. like that. You see how much movement there is in the back of that car shaking the wheel. It is. It absolutely is. The right rear looks like it's bent almost the wrong way, like it's, uh, you know, cambered the wrong direction. You can actually see the shake, whether that's the tire or the wheel, the combination of both, maybe a bent tow link. My bigger concern is exactly what you just said. Stay off the curbs. I think the one has finally had enough. He's going to come to pit road. Or is he just that far? He's, He's just that, that far, far off, off the pace. Oh, I think this tow lake is finally given up right here. Yeah. I think whatever it is that's bent is finally broken for the one car. He's going to have to come to pit road. And just like that, Trackhouse has had troubles with both cars here at the Roval. 25 to go. We're going to see Chastain currently 32nd. He's now a lap down. It shows plus 17, but the concern is, I'll say it again, you know, Cindric is running 22nd. Oh, there are points here. to gain. Oh, he can go up there and pass the Chastain. Yeah. I, I wonder, Steve, if it's an A-frame, because the toe link, this thing would be undrivable. So it might be an upper, or possibly a lower, but maybe an upper A-frame mount that's broken on this car. Austin Cindric, another playoff driver. It's been eventful for him. Hasn't had the pace we expected. They all slow down much more than he expected. Wow, into the back of Joey Hand in that 15. Yeah, Joey was trying to allow the car on the inside, the 10 of Alvarola to get through. So he backed off really early to fall in line there. Cindric plows into the back of him. Apparently that's how you drive when you're seven points out of making it to the next round of the playoffs. But we've just seen a little aggression here. A difficult day for track house racing as well. Thirty-five laps complete here in stage three. This race is quickly coming to a close. So let's check in with our international drivers in the field. Daniel Kvyat, unfortunately, out early due to some issues there on track. Joey Hand currently six laps down in the 38th position. This is Joey's final Cup Series start of the season. A few positions forward, Loris Hesemans driving in the 33rd position right now, one lap down. And Mike Rockenfeller still on the lead lap, currently in 31st. 31st, that would be a career best finish in this series for Mike Rockenfeller.
Just 23 laps to go. The NASCAR Cup Series playoffs from Charlotte. Bank of America Roble 400. And things definitely getting intense. The fans loving what they're seeing. But so many teams now looking at the points very closely, including Chase Briscoe, Daniel Suarez, and Austin Sindrick. Because the one we just saw, the one of Chastain go into the garage. Dave. And Rick, the problem after he hit the wall became so bad. We saw the car shaking on track. He needed to come to pit road. When they came to pit road, they were unable to fix it there with more people around the car and better resources, tools and equipment wise in the garage. He backed all the way down into the garage and into his garage stall so the team could go to work here. It's the right rear suspension change. We'll see what they can do with the time left. It's hard to know, Kim, if he's going to have enough points cushion to still make it through the next round of the playoffs. Well, about 15 laps ago, Austin Cedric's team told him when he was winning 25th, you need at least 10 spots, maybe more. Well, since then, he's moved up to the 21st position. They have kept him up to date. They have said you are four points behind the 99 and you are seven points behind the 14. We need you to grab more spots. Marty Austin Cedric looking to become the first rookie in the playoff history to advance to the round of eight, but he's got to hustle. Meanwhile, Chase Briscoe, Austin Cindric's good friend, sits in 15th and on the right side of the cut line. They have told him about the problems with, obviously, the 99 and the one as well. Johnny Klausmeyer told him a moment ago, we cannot lose any spots. Stay where you are. Right now, a three-point cushion. That's it for Chase Briscoe. That's really the stress for Chase Briscoe, a three-point cushion. So while well, he just ran the fifth fastest lap on the racetrack, and I believe he can reach out and probably outrun Larson in front of him looking at the pace and maybe even get to Truex. You can't push yourself into a mistake and lose three spots. You know, it's this risk versus reward. He's really gonna have to balance with 21 laps to go. And Suarez just passed his teammate Chastain, and he has the potential now that his pace is back. This 99 car is a little bit quicker on the racetrack now since the repairs on pit road. He's set right in here in front of this 48 car of Gregson running good pace laps. So will this fluid stay in there? Will he be able to maintain power steering throughout the rest of the race? Who will fall out? What cars might slip through the cracks here late in the race and allow him to gain those positions he needs? He's three laps down right now, so you know he's gonna have to have some help from other people. Yeah, and for Cendrick, who is seven spots out, to go get you know 10 or 15 positions or he's, he's 15 seconds behind those cars so i mean yeah he might be able to battle by a few but he's going to need a yellow they've got to get a yellow to be able to bunch the field up for this two to do anything and eric jones in that 43 car he's got about 10 laps newer tires on his his car so he's going to be putting pressure on cedric trying to get by him if you're a ross chastain fan asking exactly how long this take this repair is going to take as we see right there the bent control arm coming off. This is exactly what they're changing. I assume it's this upper. See, I'm going to draw you there, or the lower is right there. I'm not sure which one they've taken off. I think it was the upper, the way that it was kind of bending around a little bit. But this area here and this area here hooked to the actual chassis. You're going to have to take the other side off the upright. This is an eight or 10 minute change for the one car. So they're hoping for carnage. They're hoping for late yellows and a lot of carnage. That's the best chance for this one car. But right now, as we're looking at the points, they're still 13 above that line. So Ross Chastain being scored 37th, and the two cars below him, he can't fall further than 37. Okay, then I'm going to take back my statement. They want no carnage yes. because they just want it to finish the way it is, right? <laughs> I was thinking they were trying to try to protect the points, but you're absolutely right. You said it better, Rick. They just want this thing to run green and finish how it is because if we have a bunch of late restarts, while Briscoe could be involved, he also could make up the points. Yeah, right now, as they're running, Austin Sindrick is about 12 seconds behind the position that he would need to get enough points to leapfrog someone. What just happened up here, Rick? That's why there's engineers down there. So when I think <laughs> I have a good pit idea, you hit me like, no, you have that wrong. We actually want it to be the other way. So look here, Eric Jones has drove by the two, but now the two passing the 11. I think Danny Hamlin's fine with that. So he did all that work to break even on yep. points. Got passed by one, went past the other one. Denny being 13 to the good right now is probably being told by his team about the situation that the two car is in. And don't, don't really try to race him too hard. But like Denny might have made a little contact with the wall there. Such a stressful part of the race. You know, with 19 laps to go, everybody is waiting for that caution. Everybody is saying there's no way this thing's going to go all the way. It just never does. And But where is that caution going to come from? 
mechanically you would think can these cars make it all the way after the punishment they've been giving going over the humps on the corners. On Wednesday at 9 a.m. Eastern, make sure to join Brad Doherty on NASCAR Radio Channel 90. That's NBC Sports on Sirius XM. Our colleague Brad Doherty will join the morning drive with Stoney and the Bagman on Wednesday, 9 a.m. Eastern to talk about not only what's happening here at the Roval, but what to look forward to next week at Las Vegas. That will be the first race of the round of eight in front of these drivers. But it's still to be determined who will be in that round of eight. These two fighting for the second spot. Tyler Reddick and the 16 of A.J. Allmendinger, the 99, back on pit road, Dave. Yep, he is struggling for sure, Rick. So they're going to come down and try to band-aid that car to the end. Meanwhile, his teammate Ross Chastain has just exited the garage area in the one car. Now, Suarez is the one with the points problem. You see him three below. As for Chastain, we still see that little bit of cushion above, plus 13. There's Ross rolling out moments ago in the one car. That plus 13, guys, that wouldn't have been nearly as good if Chastain had won a stage and added 10 points to that. He's back on track. Going to go fast now that they repaired that one car. That's a great point, Dave, right? Plus 13 makes it look like it was never really in question, but that involves, you know, that includes those 10 stage points for the one car. So great point by Dave and just how important those stages are. We, we saw the 16 get by the 8. Now the real question is, it's only a couple lap fresher tires, right? Will a 16 have any sort of pace to try to run the nine car down? The nine has looked pretty comfortable out front, but that's because he didn't have this man right here undefeated in the Xfinity Series race chasing him. 16 of Almendinger. If anybody's going to have a little pace in their car, I would believe it's this, this man right here with 16 to go. I mean, he's in striking distance. I know five seconds seems like a big gap, but with 17 corners, it's easy to gain or lose five seconds. And we haven't spoke much about it, but Harvick's drove up to fourth place, 15 seconds behind the leader, but still good run for this four car. Justin Haley still in the battle here in the top five. Michael McDowell always doing a good job. Noah Gregson, eighth. Austin Dillon, ninth. Cole Custer, 10th. All good runs. And I think the one thing that we've got to remember with the 16 and the 9, the 16 felt they were close on fuel. The 9 
was comfortable or are they that's the other question will they have to maybe give up a little performance to make sure that they have enough fuel to get to the end I think we had one car on the back straightaway miss the back straightaway chicane I believe it was the eight of Tyler Reddick let's see what he does when he comes around the front straightaway he's going to pull over here see him at the top of the screen he's going to pull over there and stop serve a penalty right here he needs to go ahead and get that done stop. Complete there stop. You go. stop stop go Took his little time there getting to a complete stop, but able to serve that penalty now, pull away. He's in third place, a little over five seconds behind the leader when that happened. Now you look at it, over 12 seconds back. So tough situation for the eight. Losing a little pace, trying to push the car a little bit. Losing some time to AJ, probably asking a little bit too much of the car in the braking zone on the back straightaway. All right, guys, let's go through the field and we'll take a look at the top five. And Marty, we'll start with you and Chase Elliott. Boy, Rick, in a year where it's been so hard to build momentum, Chase Elliott trying to become just the second driver in 2022 to win back-to-back -back races. Kevin Harvick did it earlier this year. And I'll go back to the call Alan Gustafson made at the end of stage two, giving up that one playoff point for this possibility. He could get five playoff points if he keeps the lead for 15 more laps. A.J. Allmendinger does have three lap fresher tires than Chase Elliott, but he has 4.8 seconds, 4.5 seconds now to gain over the nine. He is faster than the nine car right now. Does he have enough time? That's the biggest question, Kim. And currently positioned in the third position, Tyler Reddick, you just saw that mistake. He had to come to a complete stop. His team reminding him of his teammates' mistake earlier and the fact that Austin Dillon had to do a pass-through penalty. They said, Tyler, absolutely a complete stop. Get those wheels stopped. We don't want to serve a pass-through, Dave. Kevin Harvick running in fourth. What a day for them. Booted from the playoffs way too early for the former champion. Now trying to make something of the 2022 season. Remember, crew chief Rodney Childers not here, operating without him, but Harvick keeping the car up front all day long Kim and a great day for Justin Haley in the 31 car currently riding in the fifth position taking notes from teammate AJ Allmendinger right now they currently just need a little bit more lateral grip they told me they thought they had a top 10 car right now looking like they might end up with a top five out in front 14 to go for Chase Elliott could it be number eight as far as road course wins Just over 15 laps to go here from the Charlotte Roval. Interestingly enough, we've seen very few cautions today on the track, and a lot of crew chiefs weren't necessarily planning for this. I caught up with the crew chief of the five team, Cliff Daniels, earlier today. Here's what he had to say about the anticipated tire wear from today's race. In general, this place is known for a bit of tire fall off. I do think with the next gen car and the tires that we have now, it will probably be a good bit less than what we've seen in the past. Still some. Uh, but what's also interesting about this tire and this car is the tire can cool down a lot under caution. And if you don't take tires and kind of an end of race scenario, uh, it can fire off okay. And, and you may not see all the laps on your tires like you historically would have. Still plenty of time in this race to see that yellow flag come out. But as they sit, that five car currently in the 13th position. Almondinger has made up almost a second on Chase Elliott. 
Elliott with a 3.8 second lead right now over A.J. Allmendinger. You see the gap now between one and two. Steve, the incident with Ross Chastain, you think you found that? Yeah, so we saw some damage on the right side. He had to go into the garage. So we had to kind of do a little digging to find out where he made some wall contact. So let's see exactly where it is. Right here where the 17 comes off, look right here to the right. You see that tire mark right there on the wall? So Jeff, we snuck in on the NASCAR onboard camera. Let's ride along with Chastain. You're going to see exactly what happens. Yeah, he just throttles up right here, just uses too much racetrack contact with the end of that wall. And that's where the damage came from. We've seen that before. Drivers hit that multiple times in practice as well as the race. It's just, again, one of the difficult parts of this racetrack. Back out on track, Ross Chastain still 12 points above the cut line. And right now it's a four point differential between Chase Briscoe, who is currently oh. into the oh. next round, and a Great. big hit there for Suarez. I think that is a retaliation from the seven of LaJoy. It seemed like the 99 and the seven made contact getting into the final chicane, set the seven backwards. And that right there, we we're on board with the 99, but looking at the nose of the seven, I think there's some damage right here. Let's go back to the first incident. This is coming down into the front stretch chicane. Corey's trying to get around the 99 here. They make contact. That spins Corey over here. I thought for sure this was a caution NASCAR, but the seven gets going. Here's another look at that. Yeah, Suarez just drives across the racetrack into the left rear quarter panel of the seven car. Corey's like, hey, man, what was that for? So when he got the opportunity to pay it back quickly, he did. Kim. Not sure what the issue is with the five. Uh, looking at them on pit road, we'll check in with the come team. Over, they are bringing come on out over, come on over. There you go. Uh, So again, Kyle Larson, unfortunate circumstances. Right rear toe link is what we're hearing. Got knocked out, so not sure where that contact came from. We talked about this at the top of the show. There doesn't even have to be wall contact. Why there are walls everywhere, these curbs will destroy a race car. Drivers, Jeff, we talked about it. Help me out, man. 109 laps is a lot of laps at a road course. This issue for the five car is going to be stressful. Plus 16 currently, but dropping as he drops. Look, now plus 15. There's a couple more spots, and there are about another six or seven spots that are available that are one lap down. Now he is plus 14. He's going to be behind Chastain very quickly, Kim. And last year, remember, the team overcame multiple issues to rebound and take the win. So I asked Crew Chief Cliff Daniels what they learned about the team in these type of moments that might help them through today's race. He said he now has a better understanding of how to manage the team's strengths, depths, and talents, and it taught him what crisis scenarios are and how to work through them. We're seeing this right now. Crew Chief Cliff Daniels trying to keep his driver and team calm as they work through this problem. What's the regular season worth? Plus 11. Kyle Larson has 20 playoff points between race wins, stage wins, and his finish of the regular season. Those 20 playoff points that get carried from round to round right now is the only thing keeping Kyle Larson into the playoffs. This is the defending champ who will only have a chance to advance if he is fortunate enough not to get some yellows here, and he is fortunate enough to have those 20 playoff points heading into this round. He drops down to seventh right now, plus 11 for Larson as he sits on pit road and they go to work. He's down to 31st in the scoring. Chase Elliott out front, under 10 to go.
NASCAR Cup Series playoffs on NBC. The Bank of America Roval 400 now under eight laps remaining with Chase Elliott out in front. A.J. Allmendinger four seconds back running in the second spot. 47 green flag laps. That is the longest green flag stretch in five races that have been run here at the Charlotte Robo. They continue to work on the five of Kyle Larson. He has fallen to 33rd now, and that means only nine points above the cut line. Well, and there's enough. There's four more points that can be lost by Kyle Larson if you watch how this can play out. Now, I don't believe the 99 is going to be able to gain any points, which is the first car below the cut line. That's who he has nine points over. It's really the two of Sindrick that I think is a bigger issue, right? So he's about 12 points over the two of Sindrick. Sindrick running 20th on the racetrack. The question will be, you know, will he get a yellow? And the yellow could be right here. We have seen contact between the 7 and 99. We'll see if they can find their way around each other this time. This time, it seems like it all works out. Well, you know, Suarez has been having issues with his car. I mean, we did see that wreck, but how yes. much control does he have? Well, and I mean, he has been fighting. To your point, Jeff, that is a great point. Every time we've gone on board since he's had this issue, once again, you see it, that steering wheel shake. Um, if he has power steering of any sorts, it seems to be intermittent. Oh, oh boy. Yeah, right I mean, there. you see how much he's fighting just to control his own car. Yeah. That contact he made, you know, with Corey LaJoy, Corey doesn't know he's having problems. He just knows yeah. he got run into. Like, what happened here, guys? Be coming up on six laps to go. Again, Suarez has scored five laps down, so when one more lap, he won't be able to gain any more positions as far as if anyone would fall out, uh, they still wouldn't fall behind him. And the one thing that he would have to hope for right now is that Chase Briscoe would have an issue and come back to him. And that Kyle Larson story just gets even better. 13 stage points Kyle Larson has earned today, right? As now the repairs are done on the five cars. So those stage points, Dale, you and I were having this debate, right? Is that the right call? Well. You know, we had no idea there would be a mechanical issue on the five, but Kim, at this point, it looks like all those strategy calls to score stage points, saving the five cars day. Absolutely, and crew chief Cliff Daniels reassured his driver with all the information they had. It looked like they were still going to be good. So again, trying to keep Kyle calm. They did replace the right rear tow link. They told Kyle, though, the uppers are bent, so it might limp a little right now, trying to meet minimum speed. <laughs> limp a little. If we go back to, like, I think it was the first Roval here, he limped around this racetrack, literally banging off the wall to get into the playoffs and yeah, advance the playoffs. That was an amazing race. Yeah, that wasn't even like, easy on that was like an army crawl. Yeah. Oh, we got a piece of uh, the wall. Well, one of those, one of those signs, signs that's yep. on the racetrack. This may force NASCAR to call to call, throw a caution here. It's out of the racing line, and normally if it's out of the line, they wouldn't throw the caution, but this is well, a possibility. It's out of the line single file, but you know, that's a right-hand corner. If you get two by two, the outside car is going to be forced to run that over. There it is. Caution, caution, caution has caution come caution. out. There will be a restart. Well, first, who comes and gets tires? I mean, we just saw this is the longest green flag run in, in Roval history at nearly 50 laps. Chase Elliott had a four-second lead on A.J. Allmendinger. I don't know if the leaders are going to pit, but the entire playoff picture, everything we talked about with Briscoe, and Larson and Suarez and Sindrick is now totally up in the air because not only could you make the right pick call, that could be even staying on the racetrack while others pick. Then you have to figure out the restart. Everything can get put into a blender right here over the last few miles of this race. Again, Suarez is five laps down. Larson also five laps down. So they are in 36th and 35th respectively as far as gaining points based on positions. So in my mind, there's there's one car that this really, really, really affects, and that's the two of Austin Sindrick. So if you look at your points, right, Sindrick is on the racetrack eight points below. Suarez, he's on the racetrack, but he's five laps down. He's on the same lap as Kyle Larson, who's plus seven. It's Briscoe and Sindrick. That is the story. Sindrick at 20th and Briscoe in 13th. They're the ones that could gain or lose the most points here. Larson and Suarez, they're trapped, really. They're five laps right. down. So, you know, Briscoe can't give up five, and Cindric needs to five, find eight, you know, on Briscoe or 10 on Larson, which, which is possible. He's running in the 20th position. There are absolutely 10 points available. Now the question is, 
does it take fresh tires? With only 25 cars in the lead lap, I think you have to come get tires if you're Cindric. I don't think there's any way you could stay on the racetrack without fresh tires. You have to put the ball in your, your all-star's hand, and the all-star of every race team is the driver. I want to put the ball in my driver's hand and let him determine the opportunity we have to advance or not. There's 25 cars on the lead lap right now, and Cindric scored 20th. So coming to pit road, so we know where that piece came from, guys. It's laying on the racetrack. <laughs> that all this, yeah, all this is glued to this inside wall over in that turn six. And so it has came loose. A driver made contact with that wall right there, peeling that piece away. Out onto the racetrack it went. You know, I was, Steve, I'm with you. I think that if you're Cindric, Blaney, Hamlin, Lagan, there's no choice. I mean, it is a simple decision to well, pit right here. The question is, What's the first guy to pit? Does Elliot, does Almendinger, well, I mean, these tires, how many, How much do they mean? Christopher Bell, he's sitting there running in seventh. He has to win if he's going to make the next round of the playoffs. Decision time right now. Yeah, so the question is, does Bell come to get tires? Does he feel that he has to do something to give himself a chance to win this race? First car to come to pit road. I can't really tell there. Looks like the five laps down, and there he is, Bell. Bell is the first. Lead lap car to come to pit road. The 20 puts fresh tires on. And you see right there, the 20 getting fresh tires. They needed to do something different. They didn't have the pace to win. Also, they were very close on fuel, so needed more in case we get a green and white checker, Dave. Denny Hamlin was told, can't imagine a scenario where we finish on the lead lap and we don't go through, so come to get the fresh tires. Denny Hamlin on pit road, the final restart, maybe coming up because there is such a thing in NASCAR as overtime here at the Charlotte Roval. Differing strategies. Austin Cindric stayed out on the racetrack for track position. Can he hang on to it? And can he get into the next round of the playoffs? Going to overtime here at the Charlotte Roval. We just saw many of the teams bring it down here for tires, but a few cars choosing to stay out, uh, taking a gamble here. Notably, the two of Austin Cindric not bringing it down pit road. But we did hear a bit earlier from Cliff Daniels mention that of all the racetracks here at the Roval, he's noticed that tires, you seem to be able to uh, start off a little easier on, on older tires here on restarts. It's not quite the same disadvantage that we've seen at some other tracks. So we'll have to see how that taking that gamble for that two team pays off here as we restart for overtime. Above the cut line, Larson below it. Three laps to go. Freshest tires up front. Christopher Bell, can he get up there and win his way into the next round? Three flags back in the air. A lot of contact into turn one. The They're wrecking. They're wrecking. The 34 is in the wall as well. 48s 
Will they be able to keep going? Harrison Burton in the 21. He's turned around as well. They keep banging on the side. It's the 16 of Almendinger in front now. He's side Harvick, down. Harvick's in the side. Of AJ off of the track. Harvick in the lead. Kevin Harvick takes the lead away. Now running second, the nine of Chase Elliott. Oh, and around goes, goes the, the nine. nine. Elliott sliding through the grass. All right, forward. Back up front, the 20 of Christopher Bell is all the way up to fourth place, guys, and he's going for third. Kevin Harvick, slow, coming on to the big oval. And here comes Bell. Bell all the way up to second now as he's battling with Allmendinger. Christopher Bell pushing the 16 up over the humps. And now, congestion again. Exactly. Problems in hey. that trilogy, chicane. The 14 is backwards, we're on board with him. The points are gonna completely move around as the field gets reset. And remember, if Bell wins, it's automatic advancement. It moves the entire cut line. He's in third with two to go. Two to go, Bell running third. Reddick is second. And everybody fighting for positions, including that two of Sindrick. Here comes Bell trying to close in on Reddick in second place. He's right on the back bumper of that eight car headed to turn five. And we've seen cars struggle through five and six today. There's Sindrick, everybody's trying to attack him on those over tires. Bell to the inside of the eight car. He takes second place. Bell going after the leader. Now, no cars between Christopher Bell on the freshest tires and Kevin Harvick leading the race. Cautions come out. There'll be a restart. Ty Dillon spun out here. Full course. Full course. Oh, the curb. You got a piece of the curb right here. That's down in this back chicane. And now, I think that caution is actually a benefit to Christopher Bell. Yes. Now he is right there with Kevin Harvick. Much fresher tires. Pitted from seventh, restarted 12th, now in second with better tires. Listen, that was a, a break, a huge break for Christopher Bell. But everybody else, think about it. Kyle Larson, seven to the good. The two car Cendric five to the good, the 99, five down. They do, none of those guys want to see Christopher Bell win this race. Yeah, and Larson can't really move, right? He's five laps down, so it's not really up to him. It's really, can Cendric find a couple spots worth of points? And if Christopher Bell wins, Cendric is gonna Cindric's have to. Out. Well, he has to find two points to beat Larson. Yes, that's He's true. He's two points behind Larson. Right now, what Cendric needs to think about is find two positions. Do not allow your playoff future to be determined by the 20 winning the race. You need to assume he's going to win the race. If you're on top of this two-car box right now, you're telling him you must find two points. You see a right front flat on the 19 of Truex. Back to that yellow, you had mentioned the 42. That curbing is a very heavy piece of steel that had come off sitting in the middle of that chicane. I don't think there was any safe way to have cars go through there at speed. I think that's a required yellow. Good eyes by NASCAR to throw it out. Look at this restart. This was chaos. The two the nine in, the, in the 16. Yeah, the two pushes the 48 into the 34. Bounces off the wall, bounces off the two. Goodness. All kinds of contact. The 21 spun out down there. And this continued. Like, all of that chaos continued for the entire full lap. Look at Briscoe on the bottom. A really aggressive move, making a three ride on the bottom. That worked out well for him. Just 34 pound. Wow, that is a hard shot at a 34. Yeah, he come off the ball and cleaned the side off a few cars in anger. And Chase gets sent here over in turn six. Lights him up. Chase ends up coming down pit road after he gets the car going. But the eight dives to the inside right here, makes contact. Chase is like, man, there's no way you're making that turn. There's no way somebody's turning underneath me. It's a bit of a dive bomb move because the eight's going to be on the outside going into the next corner. It's it's a it's a low, low percentage pass. So he'll have some frustrations and I'm sure some words with Reddick about where he was going, what he was thinking. And here's 
what happens. Look at the 14. He just kind of gets sent. Everybody running over each other down here, and that's where the curb comes loose. Steve mentions that curb being a heavy piece of steel laying out in the middle of the racetrack. This contact Harvick got into the 16. Armendinger had gotten in front of the nine for the lead. So that right was there. One. There's the move where they where those two made contact. Yeah, that was one lap. Yeah. And all of that contact all the way around the track, and it ended up being the trilogy chicane where uh, one of the humps came free, and so and onto the racetrack, caution comes out. And we know that uh, Almendinger remembers that four car getting in the back of him over there in turn three, turn four. So a lot of guys a little ticked off. This red flag, hopefully Harvick's thinking, might calm Almendinger down a little bit sitting there. Well, you see at the top, it says overtime. I bring that up because there was some conversation about fuel. That's why A.J. Allmendinger came at lap 75. So Harvick at 73, Reddick at 73, Allmendinger 75. You see the numbers down there. Sindrick, you know, working on those points at 73. Does he have enough fuel to run these extra laps? We'll have to just wait and see. 35 laps currently, and we're going to see at least, at least one more pace lap before we see one to go. And we know Cindric is going to have to be very aggressive if he wants to gain any points on the five of Kyle Larson. Let's listen into their radio. So right now, the 20 is second. So if he wins, we've got to get to 11. If he doesn't win, 15th or better should get us in, but we're going to keep you posted as best we can. And, and Rick, they have not had the opportunity to pit yet. So the question is, you know, what do you do? I think at this point, the red flag is helping the old tires because now they're cooling off a little bit. Now it doesn't, you know, put age back on. It's not the fountain of youth, but it definitely helps as now we see the crew trying to reattach that curbing that has come loose at the end. So, you know, now the question is, you know, who pits? Does anyone pit? I only bring that up because Briscoe, you know, we're kind of ignoring Briscoe because he's minus nine because he got spun around in 23rd. But, but if he comes to pit road, Put some fresh tires on. What, look at the chaos we just saw. You right. don't think there's nine positions right. that could end up at Chase Briscoe? I believe he could have a chance. He's very good at the road courses. He's aggressive. I'd love to know. I mean, look at him sitting right there. It's just so much is asked of these drivers, and, and it's great, right? As a race fan, there, there's no more exciting finish than these overtime races at places like the Roval. We have another cut race in a few weeks at Martinsville. I'm sure it'll be the same way. Steve, as a race fan, you know what else we love? Being able to talk to a competitor with just two races to go, or excuse me, two laps to go in this race and the potential to win. Let's see if we can talk with Christopher Bell, Jr. Yeah, I can't believe this. Hey, Christopher Bell, it's Dale Jr. up in the booth. You got us? Christopher Bell, it's Dale Jr. in the NBC booth. You got us, buddy? He's on our channel, too. There you have it. We'll, we'll switch over. I can't hide from Junior. He's going to find his way to Channel <laughs> 2. I, I know it. it. Here we go. Here we go. Hey, Christopher Bell, still Junior in the NBC booth. You got us? I got you. Man, I cannot believe you are letting us talk to you right now, considering what's about to happen and what you've got to go out there and accomplish. But with those new tires, the position you're in, you got to feel pretty good about these final few laps. Yeah, I uh, couldn't ask for much more, so. I was a little disappointed when the yellow came out. I thought I was going to be able to run him down pretty easily, but uh, I guess now I'll just have to restart beside him. And um, yeah, just got to stay calm and hit my marks. Yeah, that's going to be tough. You're going to have a lot of guys behind you pushing really hard. But uh, where on this racetrack, I guess, you want to get through turn one, obviously, with no issues. But where on this racetrack is the best opportunity for you to make that pass? Yeah, well, with me having pressure tires, it seems like turn eight and uh, maybe that six, seven transition, um, it seems like the newer tires has a big advantage right there in that section. So six, seven, eight seems like the, uh, the best part. Well, man, we can't wait for the race to get restarted. We know you're going to go out there and try to make it happen. Appreciate you talking to us. So think about what is about to happen or what potentially could happen for Christopher Bell here. You see on the bottom left of your screen, he was 28 points down right now. So he was below the cut line. He could join the likes of Brad Keselowski, Kevin Harvick, 
Denny Hamlin, Chase, uh, all drivers who have had to win a race to advance, and right now he's in that position, well, Steve. Th think about that access, right? I mean, we just, yeah. We're, I mean, we're at the two minute warning at the football game and the playoffs, and the quarterback ran over and talked to the sideline reporter. I mean, it doesn't happen yeah. in any other sport. It's unbelievable that Christopher Bell not only took the time, but then, to be quite honest, he sounded like he was sitting up here next to us. I mean, <laughs> unbelievable, his control of the emotion and the moment he's in. I think it's important to know that he he approves right. that communication, right? They, they reach out to him and say, is it okay? Were you willing to discuss this with us? And he was, and that says a lot about his character. And like you say, Steve, in a moment where he's going to try to go out here and do something that's going to give him the opportunity to race for a championship, he's willing to sit down and talk to us. I was surprised to hear him say, I didn't want that caution. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I yeah. thought, yeah. I mean, I'm like, wow. I mean, you're going to be able to start side by side. I think what he's thinking, though, Junior, is that he felt like he could catch him yep. and get by Harvick and not have to deal with all the chaos coming from behind into turn one. Uh, you know, so that's what he was thinking is he thought he could get to him. But we just didn't know. I didn't know it was that clear that he felt he could. Safety vehicles have just come out of the Trilogy chicane, so they've finished the work there. They're cleaning off other parts of the track. While they're doing that, let's check in with Marty. Rick, you just feel gutted for Chase Briscoe, who had done everything he needed to do today, barely above the cut line for much of the race. And now, after being spun by, they think, Austin Dillon, he is now nine below the cut line. Johnny Klausmeyer actually wanted him to come to pit road this last time before the red flag came out. That message never got to Chase, so they missed the window to come to pit road. Here is what happened on the racetrack, and yes, indeed it was Austin Dillon who spun Chase Elliott right there as the contact. Also, Kyle Busch a part of that as well. But Briscoe went from at that moment above the cut line to below the cut line, but they're going to come in put on fresh tires when the caution or the red flag is lifted. Those fresh tires mean a lot. They, in their mind, think if they finish 18th, they should be able to advance. But right now, minus nine below the cut line. Oh, I, I think Briscoe's absolutely still in this. I mean, the car, I'm going to say one piece, really one piece for the Roval, looks pretty good, right? He's going to come to pit road. I think other cars are going to have to come to pit road. I'm a little concerned about Austin Sendrick's fuel situation, sitting 13th, pitting on lap 73. Um, two laps here, you know, let's call it five miles, 34 corners, a lot of opportunity. You see everybody's fuel situation there on the scoring pile on Harvick, very close, Reddick, and you see Cindric down there in 13th, also very close to Fumes as well. So I, I don't count Briscoe out of this at all. Even with a Bell win, I believe that, that Briscoe could get enough points that pass Larson. Yeah, on top of that, Cindric has, you know, he pitted lap 73. The guys around him, 105. So why is he short on fuel? Because he has old tires on. That is a major disadvantage. The real question is, you know, it's not just Bell on new tires. I, to your point about not wanting a yellow, I think your analysis is exactly right, Jeff. He does, you know, he doesn't want any part of this chaos because he thought he could just beat him on speed. You got Kyle Busch, Busher, Custer. How about Custer having a great day back there in eighth and on some fresh tires? I'm not sure he's done getting spots as well. I mean, you saw what that last restart looked like. We didn't know which wreck or which, you know, bumper contact we right. should be covering because there was about 50 in one set of corners. Let's go to the Peacock pit box, check in with our Hall of Famer, Dale Jarrett and Kyle Petty. All right, guys, we saw stage one and stage two go caution free. <laughs> stage three and we're into overtime. Will you guys predict another caution before we see the checkers? Uh, so I think there's going to be a lot of action and a yes. lot of carnage. It's just a matter if they throw the caution, if, if it warrants that. But what a great call by yes. Adam Steve. Great call. To bring Christopher Bell there, knowing that they had a good race car, but it wasn't going to be a winning car, but to come get four tires, be the first car to do that, and, and now give his driver that chance. It, it, the strategy in this race is, is just mind-blowing. The way they, they worked the first stage, the way they worked the second stage, and then we're down to the last eight or ten laps, and there's still strategy in this thing. And I, I listen to these guys in the booth, and the only card that I know that's out is, is um, Alex Bowman. He's the only guy I know that can't because everybody else still has a shot if this race plays out and gets wild again, and I'm thinking it is. Oh, there's no doubt about that. It's just a matter of, you know, it, are we going to get, if we go to more than one, we're certainly going to get into a fuel situation for a number of these other guys up front. So, uh, Stevie, I'll let you handle all of that figure. <laughs> <laughs> well, first question is, does anyone feel that they missed an opportunity to come get tires and fuel the first time and they want to change their mind? That looked like the three, perhaps, of Austin Dillon from the ninth position. I thought there'd be some more takers. Somewhere back here, I think there's going to be a change of decisions. Here we go. 
Uh, I'm going to call that Logano, I believe. Here comes Chase Briscoe. As we mentioned, I think this is the best shot for Briscoe to find nine points, or at least nine points. Let's put some fresh Goodyear tires on and let the chaos kind of ensue. Marty. Well, you got to give credit to Johnny Klossmeyer, his driver, Chase Briscoe. He was telling him, hey, we're still in the game here, much to the point you were making a moment ago. Joey Logano also coming down pit road. Paul Wolf making this decision to put fresh Goodyears on. They actually were the last car that didn't pit on the caution before. Also, you see William Byron coming down pit road for four fresh Goodyear tires as well. We'll see if this is enough for Chase Briscoe right now. Minus nine. Can he make it in these final three laps? And Steve, guys like Harvick, Rennick, Almondinger, Haley, all saving fuel right now? Absolutely. All of the cars at the front that have the least amount of fuel on board, the ones you mentioned, uh, it's tough, right? Because you're trying to save fuel and you see them clean up their tires because while you have to have your engine run, if you have a bunch of stuff on your tires, it's not going to accelerate anyway as we see a little bit more further repairs on the 22 of Joey Logano at plus 16. He should be in good shape. Think about this though, you know, we're sitting up here out of the chaos a little bit and, and our timing and scoring is updating instantly on the points. I have sat on one of these pit boxes in these elimination formats and, and there's just so much you're trying to figure out. It, it's really like information overload. You're figuring points, you have your spotter, you have all this information. That looks calm right there, but you see all the wires going into that headset. There are so many people talking to you. You gotta try to process it all and make good decisions. And instantly we see the field uh, doubling up, so we're going to come right around here and get this race underway again. An attempt at overtime. All right, let's listen in to the five radio of Kyle Larson. The only point left up for grabs that we can control at all in our mess of a world right now is to stay ahead of the 99. But we need that one point. Yep. You know, I kind of like, you I'll know, I like simple information. That's yeah. it. You gave me one goal. <laughs> Thank you. I don't feel glad it wasn't six or eight different things. This mess of a world. So let's go back and talk about we know Christopher Bell has new tires. Where are new tires an advantage? To me, it's everywhere. It's on the launch. When they drop the green flag, you should have more rear grip, have a good possibility to get to turn one with Harvick, and then use those tires to accelerate off of turn one. What he has to be guarding against, but it's almost nothing you can do about it is to keep the guy from behind you running into you. Even if you drive in the corner a little bit deeper, use those new tires to get away from Amendinger. Don't let him get into the back of you because those new tires will make that car turn. And remember, Kevin Harvick is the control car here. He's the one who determines when they go when they come into the restart zone. So Christopher Bell on the outside. Kevin Harvick on the inside. First attempt at overtime here at the Charlotte Roval. The elimination race in the round of 12. Back underway. Side by side and carnage in turn one. Six cars turned around. Can they get going again? Out front is Christopher Bell. He's past the four of Harvick. Blaney, one of those cars in turn one, finally pulling away. With Bell as the leader, that has Larson one point, just one point above the cut line. Cindric one back. Again, that's just a position on the racetrack. Cindric, if he gains a position, he'll be tied with Larson. And he is in a battle back here. You see it at the bottom of the screen, side by side with the 43 car of Jones down the back straightaway. And again, the tiebreaker as we see brakes locking up as oh. they go into Trilogy. Oh, the two's around. Pain, around. And around goes the two. Cindric now waiting to get back on track. Larson plus five now as they're running on the track. White flag in the air, one more time around. Christopher Bell, can he win his way into the next round of the playoff? Four cars spinning across the front straightaway here. Ty Dillon, the 23 car as well. Ty Gibbs. Briscoe, Larson tied right now for the final spot. Briscoe trying to grab another position. 
With Briscoe, that. Briscoe's got to make this work. He's got to go find this spot. He's got new tires. The tiebreaker would go to Chase Briscoe, the best finish in this round, if they stay even. Christopher Bell now coming out onto the oval. Bell. What a day this would be for Christopher Bell. Briscoe underneath Eric Jones, but Austin Dillon underneath Briscoe. Those points are going to change again. The final time through the trilogy chicane for Christopher Bell. Right side, right side, all clear, all clear. Cole Custer throwing a block right there on everybody. Briscoe with a huge drive into the rear chicane. A two-point advantage for Briscoe and Christopher Bell. He has done it. He's won his way into the round of eight. The fight for the final transfer spot. Briscoe. Oh, He's done it. He's eliminated the reigning champion. Win and you advance, and Christopher Bell was able to do it. We're out. And you hear the words to the crew, to the driver of the five car, Kyle Larson, defeated in those final few laps of chaos on the racetrack. So much happening. Briscoe, two points, two positions on the racetrack. We talk about it. We talk about it every time we get to these cutoff races, how one point, two points, three points, they keep you from transferring. The interesting thing about Briscoe is going down the back straightaway in front of the 43 into that braking zone. He's in position to beat, you know, he has a tiebreaker when he's in that position, but yet he sent it. He sent it into that chicane on the back straightaway. Cendric spinning in the chicane on the back stretch. You have Larson, who had the issue, was five laps down. Really, he was pinned at a, in a position where he couldn't gain anything. It was out of his control. Yeah, and this, this is the race kind of in this elimination format in a nutshell, right? The, the line continues to move. Who are you racing? Who are you following? We had no concern for Kyle Larson until he comes down pit road and has to change a toe link. As you mentioned, five laps down, then there's really nothing he can do to gain or lose spots at that point. All right, here you go. Chase Briscoe needing a spot. Look at everybody checking up. Teammate slowing way down right there. Briscoe sent it in there to pick the spot up. That was two positions. Here we go. Great shot right here. I think Briscoe was committed to <laughs> overrunning this breaking zone, but I believe Cole Custer was doing some work as well to try to help out his teammate, throwing a little block there on that back straightaway, trying to get out of the way. He ends up getting himself spun over here on the front straightaway before making the, you know, making the checkered flag, Cole Custer does. Well, the checkered flag moment here brought to you by Advanced Auto Parts. What a day for Christopher Bell. He entered 33 points below the cutoff line. Knew a win was the only way he was going to advance into the next round of the playoffs. And he did just that. The crowd here at the Charlotte Roval appreciating what they just saw out of Christopher Bell. Marty? How about that, Charlotte race fans? Christopher Bell told his team, we live on six walk-off win in NASCAR playoff history. Man, you were seventh before that final caution there, Christopher. At what point did you think, man, we might be able to get this thing done? Oh, man, I don't even know. Whenever I came off pit road and I was the first car with tires, I was just trying to wait and see where I stacked up. And then I saw there were uh, 11 cars that stayed out on old tires, and I was the first one on new tires. So, you know, I said, I guess we're going to roll the dice here and see what happens. And, uh, yeah, whenever I got into turn one, my spotter did an amazing job. They all started wrecking, and he told me to, to stay tight to the middle. And, uh, and, you know, that kept me out of all the junk in turn one. So 
Just really, really, really proud of everybody on this, uh, this DeWalt team. They, uh, they deserve it, man. We've been trying so hard to get DeWalt in victory lane, and we finally got this Camry there. Adam Stevens mentioned to you earlier today, hey, no matter what, we're not going to quit. What does this say about not giving up? Man, you just got to be there at the end of these things. And, you know, I keep watching all these races where the fastest car doesn't always win. And there's, it's been no secret that road courses have not been our strength this year, but uh, we were just there at the right time. We, uh, we, we obviously weren't in position to win. We rolled the dice, we gambled, and uh, it paid off for us. You were the best team in the first round. Here in the second round, you get an epic win to advance to the round of eight. How dangerous, Christopher, can this team be? I feel really good about it, that's for sure. So I, I knew that the whole time going into this second round of the playoffs that uh, this was the troublemaker. With Talladega and then the road course being in here, whenever we weren't strong on the road courses, I was really nervous about this round. And, you know, I felt good about Texas. And then whenever we got out of there with no points, I, I thought it was going to be a really tough road, and, and it was a really tough road, but uh, there was an end to it. How about that, guys? Christopher Bell, a walk-off win. Joe Gibbs Racing and Bell advancing to the round of eight. There's the joy of victory and the agony of defeat because the reigning Cup Series champion will not be able to defend his title. He has been eliminated now from the playoffs out of the round of 12. Christopher Bell needing a win. Marty mentioned it. A walk-off win for Christopher Bell. He wins his way into the round of eight. And now, still a chance for the championship. We'll hear from more drivers when we return to the Robo. Connor Daly climbing out of the car following his Cup Series debut. Connor, initial thoughts going through your mind here after that run? Um, I mean, there was a lot that was going on. Uh, just nice to get to the end, obviously. But, um, you know, a lot for me to learn. Like, the, you know, locking the left front and then it just exploded like twice. Uh, that's that's uh, new to me. So there are a lot of new things to learn. And then the car caught on fire in the middle of the race. And then that was new as well. Um, so then I didn't have a rear view camera, so there was a lot, but it was fun. I mean, I think we're getting better, better every time, and just nice to get to the end, obviously. There was a lot of craziness at the end, um, which is a shame we were on a lead lap to take advantage of it, but uh, it was still fun for sure. How did today's competition stack up in what you might have anticipated this first run to look like? I mean, everyone's good here, so there's, you know, there's, there's, no, there's no one that sucks. And, um, you know, it's just that, that I think people, you know, uh, I, I love being a part of this series because it's a new challenge for me and uh, respect all these drivers for sure. It was a lot of fun to be you know, up against some of these guys out there. Biggest thing you learned today walking out of that one? Don't lock up the left front. That was really the only thing. Ever, ever, other than that, it was great. Whenever we got, like when we got settled in behind Truex and uh, in front of Keselowski, like we were right with those guys. So it was nice, nice to run with, you know, good competitive cars. So we could do it. We just uh, had a lot of craziness in between all the other things. <laughs> Well, thanks for the time, Connor. Thank you. That's Connor Daly, finished 34th here today on the Charlotte Roval, his Cup Series debut. That concludes today's action here from the Charlotte Roval as the 20 of Christopher Bell makes his way to victory lane. A walk-off win for that driver. He entered today's competition 45 points below the cut line. And with that win, he will advance to the round of eight. Four drivers will not advance in the playoffs. Those four drivers are Kyle Larson, Daniel Suarez, Austin Sindrick, and Alex Bowman. The Cup Series playoffs continue this weekend with the round of eight at Las Vegas. I'll be giving you updates the rest of the season as we find out in just a few weeks who our 2022 champion will be. That's it for here at the Charlotte Roval. Thanks for hanging out with me today, race fans. I'm Jesse Punch from here in Charlotte and everybody back at the Charlotte Tower. That's all for here, Charlotte.
copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our fans for your support, and we hope you enjoyed today's broadcast.